Do not worry. Do not worry. Podcast. Yes, Lamo. Everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of uh, the podcast. Do not worry, number one twenty-five. Oh, what one twenty-five? One twenty-five. That's a lot. That's a lot of episodes. How's it going, everybody? We're back, uh, joined by Noor, and uh, for the first time, folks, and maybe the last time, we got <laughs> Karin uh, here by popular demand. Hey. Uh, she asked for this. You guys demanded it in the comments, so we have made it happen. Welcome, Karin. Thank you. It's an so honor. Are you excited? Are you worried? Are you nervous? I'm. Excited? Yeah, and I'm nervous. How underwhelming is this place? It's not actually. It's like, whoa, behind the scenes. It's like seeing, like, you know when you're watching a behind the scenes of a music video and mm-hmm. you're like, that's weird. It's kind of like that, but it's fine. Don't mess up. Everybody's waiting to hate you. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> waiting for the comments. Everybody's I, uh, ready to... And Muffy and Muffy. Everyone's excited. Like, she was horrible. She was terrible. Never bring her again. They're ready. <laughs> I, can, I can hear them already typing. Uh, enjoy. Try to have fun. Ignore uh, the people. That's what I try to do, at least. I ignore everybody. In the comments, I'm kidding. Love you guys. Mali, I was just telling her in our episode, I know Elijah, we were literally like vegetables. So Again, yeah, no I pressure. always point to Nadim. Nadim was like so terrible and everyone hated him. And like now everybody loves him. It happens. Mm-hmm. Thanks, uh, to guys. Th- folks, today we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of things. I got canceled and I am uh, supposedly a homophobic bully. Uh, Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast, the show that inspired this show, and he's one of my role models, is going after our friend Frogan from the A-Rap Spots, who are going to defend Frogan's honor, not that she needs our help, because he's labeling her as anti-Semitic. Mainstream news channels like Al Jadid are talking about TikTok like all day almost, more than we do, so what's going on there? Uh, Is India safe for women to travel to? Apparently not, according to Twitter. It seems horrible. We're going to talk about that, apparently. Uh, I'm going to discuss Dune 2 and why I kind of think it's problematic, at least for me, as an Arab. Uh, and we got a lot <laughs> more uh, to talk about, like uh, Shada, we got some Abu Hadi, all the favorites. We got some TikTok live updates, all sorts of things. But before we get to that, we got three new patrons to welcome to our Patreon family, folks. Aline as a brand new blonde patron, JR as an abductee patron, and an anonymous superhero patron. Well, I know the name, but uh, he or she asked not to be named, so thank you. It'll be the last time I ever mention you. Thank you for the <laughs> thank you for the support. We can't do this without you guys. If you guys would like to support the show, make sure I can pay my interns. Except Karin, she ain't getting paid for this. Uh, support us. You know what I mean. <laughs> get on the, the page. Pick a tier that's right for you. Hey, if if you guys like Karin, maybe she can get a little something something. Let's take a second to thank some other patrons, folks. Uh, like Joe Khouri, Jad Al Haj, Sarah M, uh, Michelle Aisa, Falafel Brain, Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, Sarah Jane Fahed. And Fabian Abu Musa. And some superhero patrons like Danny Karam, Maroon Bouslaymen, Bonnie Meher Krikorian, and Mo Hariri. Thank you guys. And Najio. Thank you, Najio, our favorite superhero patrons. My favorite superhero patron. Everyone's favorite superhero <laughs> patron in general. <laughs> uh, so let's get kicked off with some of our topics. As you guys realize, we took last week off, folks. It was nice. Nah, nah, we, we usually, every like six or seven weeks, we take a little break. Mafina come in every week, every week, every week. It, it kills us. It was very nice. Mishma Uranja just skipping one episode. <laughs> my life is like so nice. I have free time. Like I changed up my instead of boxing on, on, on Monday, I boxed on like Tuesday. I like just I had just time. Time I played some Harry Potter. I ran around Hogwarts. On Wednesday, Fat <laughs> can feed the Arabs podcast. <laughs> I saw Anthony in the live chat. <laughs> yeah, I was in the live chat. I normally <laughs> never have like, time. He was like, you see what what happens when I have free time. Because I'm usually correcting the episode about the week on Wednesday at that time. So I was like, hey, I can watch another podcast. So yeah, it was nice. Uh, and Leo got sick. That's what sucked. That that mm. was horrible. That was uh, you know that ruined everything kind of. Uh, took him to get a blood test. He was stressed as fuck, but he's fine now. He wasn't. He was eating and throwing up. So he has something with a gastritis. I forgot what she called it intense uh, some type of gastro thing he's fine now he's good he's been eating a lot of wet food he's like he's like an old man in the morning then i'm giving him electrolytes because like he, he puked so much and it's like i'm giving him alpha light which is for athletes or g- geriatrics like old fucking people so this little cat is and taking your cat. he's drinking alpha light for old people and, but he, he's <laughs> cute. he's fine now god bless him it's like this, <laughs> the sounds he makes when you take him to the vet to get a blood test i like it sounds like an, a woman screeching in your ear 
It's insane. It's insane. It's so traumatic, yeah. And I was I was gonna cry to be honest. It was so fucking bad. I hate that shit. I never want to take him to the vet again. The, the vets are amazing. Everyone I take him to is amazing. He's just he hates it. And I feel like the stress that he feels like shaves like two years off his life or something. Like just let him get the disease. I think it's better at this point. <laughs> Why do you and, say that? You know what, what I mean? Fuck? My body. Uh, how old is he? Seven. He's getting up there. Oh yeah, you have some good years. <laughs> how old is your cat? Do you have a cat? He's he's just one. Oh, he's just one. He's young. Oh, you're lucky. Did you have a cat before that cat? No. All right. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping for something. How old is your, your cat? Does your cat, is he's he fine when he goes to the vet? Oh, does he go crazy? No, um, he's fine. He likes the car ride. But when he comes to the vet, he starts to Oh, he doesn't but like that. But he's just turning two now. Oh, cute little boys. No, eh, about them. They're young. They have all their... I'm <laughs> <Damn. Yeah. laughs> Not like my cat taking <laughs> Nexium and, and Alpha Light. Uh, poor fucker. Mali, we're going to get there. Uh, anyways, uh, Karin, uh, you're a topic here. I wrote meeting Karin. Before we get to this, there's there's one thing you have to do. Noor, you asked me why it was this Dr. Food cookie next to me, and I told you it's for decoration, but it's actually your initiation. <laughs> My initiation. You have to eat this cookie if I you want to be a part of this. Everyone here again, Dr. Food cookie. This is the Thor one. We got two cookies last week. Me and Noor split one cookie. Split I watched that episode. Yes. Yeah. Try this cookie, please. And you guys gagged. Oh, Taste good. this cookie. You really hated the texture. I remember. It's fine. Stop killing time. It's Open the cookie. It's okay. fine. It's not okay. fine. Stop trying to kill time. I'm not that picky. Like, just hold it. Take yeah, it. yeah b bend it for us. Show yeah. the audience how, how, like, how soft <laughs> it is. Oh, wow. She's flexible. <laughs> Next. Add a mic. Add a mic. She's flexible. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have a little bit. Do you bite. get the texture thing? Yeah. Okay. Yalla. Does she have to eat the whole cookie? If she only if she wants to. Hmm. I didn't even want to finish it because I was like, I know where this is going. I'm too old. I'm 33. I don't got to do this for anybody. You know what it's I mean? It's definitely not a cookie. No. It has cake vibes, but also like, do you guys know pop cake? The Turkish one? Eh. Uh. Uh, it has that vibe. I don't like remember. Chemical vibe. It reminded me of chemical, something. Yeah. I, I couldn't put my yeah, definitely chemicals, like very chemically. Yeah. Would you pay for this? This was like forty five thousand. I would not buy this. But I would eat the whole thing actually. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat it now. Why not? No, we can you can do this. You don't know like I don't know how long this can survive. Actually this can survive a nuclear blast. <laughs> this I can survive yeah. tricky, yeah, yeah. You can eat this in like five weeks. It'll you be can't fine. yeah, this 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 doesn't form molds because it's technically not food. So. Wow! I couldn't even <laughs> get a bite down. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. 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 It's really, it's really great. So this guy hates the interns, essentially. <laughs> His name is, I'm sorry, Pierre, I'm going to have to call you out. Like, you wrote this out there. You were so happy. Pierre um, Malichef. And he was like, one of the first comments, one of the first comments, we posted the video five minutes in. He, he wrote a comment. He's like, whoop, whoop, can't wait. Full support to the number one podcast in Lebanon. Oof. And I wish. Uh, <laughs> I would like to say, as a viewer, you have to replace your interns. It will definitely increase your views and engagement. The current interns might be awesome, but behind the camera. I guess this thought is shared by many viewers. I totally understand your Patreon supporter when he told you if you replace one of your intern, they will upgrade their Patreon support. Again, full support. Keep on doing your genuine work for your podcast with a heart. Like, damn, you know what I mean? Like, I love you. You're great. But those, those people you're with, they're horrible. Then he adds another, and he replies to himself. He's, it wasn't enough. Still passionate. He, he didn't feel like, yeah. Like, he didn't shit on you guys enough. He's like, yeah, just a little more. Just a little more. They are just annoying. <laughs> Don't know how to talk. And fake. It was emphasized when you were answering the questions during the Valentine's episode. It was crystal clear that they don't know how to have a conversation. I guess most of the people that asked questions would have been super disappointed without your intervention. My intervention. I intervened to save <laughs> the integrity of those answers. You know? That's so not true, by the way. Without That's your intervention. So not true. In, in, <laughs> Hanam and Kilalba, she's answering and giving like advice. She's trying to help. I'm just like, whatever, man. Uh, <laughs> there was like a lesbian couple and I'm like, I'm like yeah, he, he likes you. I'm just completely like ignoring everyone. I was, anyways, I, I, I sent this to the interns on, on like uh, our WhatsApp group or the crew. 
I'm like, I'm not going to take this down. Normally, I, like, if there was a comment like this, I just fucking delete it or something. I'm like, I'm going to keep this up because he's going to get shit on by the audience. No way, like, people are going to leave this up. Within 10 minutes, he had like 12 replies, everyone just shitting on him. So he deleted it himself. That was nice to see, actually. I knew this. Like, people I, replying I, back. I keep people were going to defend you guys, Wala. Who? Karim, you also got a comment. We're going to read that. This is, Yana, this is just part of the, this might seem cruel, you know what I mean? But we have to read this. You're here. Okay. Actually, I don't know. No, I don't know. Hold on. The way she said okay made me seem like... No, no, no. I can take it. You can take it? I have thick skin. You just saw what she read about herself. You know what I mean? You just saw what she said. It's okay. We're going to win this person over. Hey, that Kishik. Kishik, we're going to win you over. Oh, Karin's going to win you over. No pressure. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, let read it. Read this comment about yourself. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, let go. I will. Karin is over Sa'ile al makhlu'a bro, man, bro. Personally, I would primarily unsubscribe, then immediately after I find the nearest hammer, I would ferociously smash my device. That's how much Sa'ile al makhlu'a wana isna alab tahki English. Holy fuck. <laughs> Fake westernized brainwashed individuals who can't speak their mother tongue or express their true nature, all while sounding like they're coming out of American sitcom. Haku arabe. I like it because for once, I don't have to read these horrible things about me. And after, after <laughs> everything the, th the people said about me being a homophobe, <laughs> or me can't getting canceled last week, hey, these things give me hick life. I'm like, ah. How do you feel <laughs> about that? How do you feel about that? I expected it, honestly. Because um, I'm like, I mean, I get him. <laughs> it's honestly, it's like, it's very- I get you. It's very unwarranted. Come in, uh, like when the interns came out, when like Noor and Elijah came, <clears> it's not like my, it was, they got introduced earlier or like would you guys if i ask people for their opinion people would be like no shubat nafion they're horrible probably yeah like, no one would have given them a chance if i'd asked people about nadim no one would have given him a chance like you know what i mean but I, uh, I don't really take these things seriously so no it's funny um honestly like the english thing i'm sorry that's just how i talk like i don't <laughs> why, why do you speak so much like english like did you go to like an american school no morning? i went to i went to school beirut i grew up here it's My like parents. an american system school or like lebanese no system? lebanese i did back actually i was an se guys <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great. عادي. بتقرا عربي منيح؟ Can you read Arabic? Yeah, بقرا عربي. بس إنه بحكي English عشان it's just easier for me. And I read in English. No, no, I read a lot, so I read in English. And all the media I consume is in English. Sorry, I know I'm like westernized and brainwashed and I want to be American so خلص, bad. خلص, they were getting on your side. شو بدنا هذا؟ خلص, سبا. Do you think in English? Both. And Arabic? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, moving on to the war, folks. A quick war updates. As you know, we're in Lebanon. We're getting hit. The South is getting hit. We stand in solidarity with the South, even though, you know, a lot of people uh, pretend like it's not part of Lebanon. Anyways, Balba got hit. White phosphorus. Uh, folks, all the fun stuff that you guys know. We got we got martyrs dropping left and right. Uh, we got some here's a collection of facts that were posted on uh, Noor Sleiman's page mm -hmm. on Instagram. A reporter, journalist, Noor Sleiman. Can you please read these for us? Okay, first one. 47,000 shajra zaytun hitarait bil phosphor al abyad. Hawali 100,000 nazih. Naam. Akthar min 3,000 wahda sakaniya ta'arradat lil tadmir al kulli aw al juz'i. Akthar min 90 balad balda ta'arradat lil qasf wa al qasf bil phosphor istahdaf akthar min 20 balad balda minha. Akthar min 280 shahidan. حرب اسرائيل على لبنان حصيلة ستة شهور. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, that was the first one. We actually there was a TikTok live going on while a bombing took place. I don't know where this was. Is Abi Balbak or how? Maybe we'll find out. But so look at this. Uh, that was crazy. This is crazy. Look at this. <laughs> Ooh, tr trigger warning. Trigger warning. If you uh, if this disturbs you, if you're on August fourth or you've been through a blast, this might give you uh, like severe flashbacks. شو معلم قصفه؟ اسمع اسمع لا 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 لا
سكر 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 يا بخير سكر سكر خد اهلك وروح سكر خد اهلك وروح سكر يلا خد اهلك خليك خد اهلك خد نروح This is messed up. It's like imagine people cannot be kibbo daam halla. Shame, I'm not in Sufi double points. Oh <laughs> my God. Full double, my twelfth double. Like imagine, like we're like as he's saying, like it to be like a cowboy hat. Like I'm so glad Muffy daam in this. Like how weird it would have been. Next level dark, dark web, yani type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like haydak am bi ayit, like there's am bi jialub for us or something, or like hadam bi kib hot in that situation. Like the lady, my like, God. <laughs> we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to the lady. But so just making a joke, folks. Like he and just like it would have been so much That's weirder. Insane. It would have been absurd. Live streaming airstrikes. استغفر الله العظيم. حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Okay, I like this guy. He's like a, he's like a chill guy to have on when you're going through something like that. I feel. Like. All right. Uh, yeah, really, really. I mean, it's fucking. You know, what are the odds of something like this being uh, captured? Here's a very like dystopian video of the U.S. dropping aid into Gaza, bro. This is like straight out of the Hunger Games, bro. Look at this, man. Look at this man, they're just dropping out of the sky like crates with parachutes. Yalla, free for all. Grab what you can. Like, what is this, bro? What are you doing to these people, bro? What are you doing to these people? And everyone's watching Dune and having a good time. Holy Sanal Gai, baby. Arabian culture is fun in movies, but. This is what they do to, to Arabs, bro. Mishma'ul. Anyways, this is uh, yeah, hard to watch. Very well, disturbing. The flower massacre that happened a couple of days ago. The flower massacre? Yeah, like uh, they were getting them aid. Oh, flower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they went to get aid. And yeah. And they bombed them. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It happened again. It happened again. It happened twice. Uh, speaking of America, uh, here's Kamala Harris uh, calling for a ceasefire. Best shoot for how sneaky she is and how she says it. Uh, she calls for a six-week ceasefire, folks. Cause they just had elections in like Michigan, who over like a hundred thousand people voted that they were like undecided or uncommitted, and that sent a huge message to the Democrats that like, yo, we ain't vo voting for you unless you, you know, you stop what's happening. Especially in Michigan, there's a huge Arab population. So. And given the immense scale of suffering in Gaza, there must be an immediate ceasefire. Yeah. For at least the next six weeks, which is what is currently on the table. Look how long she waited because she knows it's going to get clipped and the Democrats are going to use this in their campaign videos. Like, look, Kamala's calling for a ceasefire. There must be a ceasefire. People cheer uh, for six weeks. Yeah, we know what you're up to. I hate Kamala Harris. Like, I hate this woman. I have no love for her. I think she's horrible. The way she moves her hands. She's like, I hate, I hate everything about this woman. Like, she is pretty horrible. Horrible. Her and Joe Biden, bro, like, Milo Nazi, and I, I consider myself, like, a left, a very left-leaning person. I would never vote for her or Joe Biden, these fake neoliberal Democrats, fucking centrists. They're, they're literally Republicans. They're just, like, pro-gay, and even that, they're not even that pro-gay, like, you know what I mean? They're just horrible. They're the worst. I hate them, and I hate Kamala Harris. So, remember this hostage? What's her name? Uh, look, I don't want to make fun of hostages. Obviously, she went through some pretty traumatic stuff. Yeah, and as nice as I want to believe that the Hamas militants were, and all those videos of them returning the hostages are, are always nice when they fist bump mm. and stuff. I miss those videos. Those were the days, weren't they? Those temporary ceasefires. It was, there was a little bit of hope in the air. Uh, so remember her? Uh, I, can't, I can't really read this. While, pa while Palestinian hostages are being crushed by Israeli tanks, uh, released Israeli hostages are out there getting nose jobs. That doesn't look like a person who went through hell. So here is her before and after. I mean, I think her lips need to get fixed, not the nose. The nose was fine. It was her, her lips are fine. No, her lips were botched. Look at that. Her lips, are, this is fixed. Her lips were like botched before. Like they were... The Botox. She needs to undo it. Like remove the filler from your lips, if anything. Like that's the only plastic surgery you should be doing. You know what I'm saying? It's those lips need to be unfixed or whatever it is. It's fine. Let her look botched. It's funny. The nose looks really bad too. Like no offense, this is not a good looking nose. Yeah. Man. What did you do? Hanam again. Everybody deals with trauma in their own way. I think she also got a tattoo that like we need to go back to dancing or something. 
I don't know. Twitter hates this woman. Oh <laughs> Everyone's God, just bullying I hate her. This woman. What can I we say? Okay, I know she was a hostage. Like you should kind of feel bad for her, but no. I don't. Uh, well, look, speaking of America and speaking of all the aid and stuff, there's a Aaron Bushnell. I'm sure you guys have heard of him at this point. He is the brave American soldier who literally took his own life. He self-immolated. He burnt himself in front of the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. Uh, this has sparked all sorts of debate online. People that are celebrating his actions. They're being accused of like glorifying suicide and encouraging suicide. A lot of people are saying that if you cheer on what this man did, you're encouraging other people to do the same, etc. We're not going to watch the whole video, but I do just want to watch the first 20 seconds of him walking up to the embassy. Like, let's just give this man his due. Aaron Bushnell uh, gave his life, did more than most people on this planet would to raise awareness about what's happening in Palestine. So the least we can do is watch just his, his final statement. Is Aaron Bushnell. I am an active duty member of the United States Air Force. And I will no longer be complicit in genocide. I'm about to engage in an extreme act of protest, but compared to what people have been experiencing in Palestine at the hands of their colonizers, it's not extreme at all. This is what our ruling class has decided will be normal. terrifying man like the conviction of walking up there there's been a lot of debate about mental health is he mentally ill is that why he killed himself was was he going to commit suicide anyways we'll talk we'll, we'll have a you know, quick conversation about that but i mean yeah that that's mainly that's mainly it he's gonna stand right there he's gonna pour that all over himself we don't need to, to keep watching um I saw the whole thing. Honestly, I was kind of shaken by it. Like, I was shook. And it's been a minute. Like, obviously, everything that we saw coming out of Gaza was horrendous. I've taken a break. I've not been really looking at a lot of this stuff anymore on my Instagram. Listen, the censorship has been on overload. Like, you, you almost can't see these things on Instagram anymore. So, everything is censored. True. You have to go through the extra step of clicking. Like, yes, I want to see the photo. So, um, this is something that I saw. It was just kind of really disturbing. Uh, he just stood there, burning alive, uh, screaming, free, screaming free Palestine. He's screaming in agony, screaming in pain. I can only imagine the smell. The, the man is being charred alive. The, the, one of the secure, obviously the, the the iconic image now of like the the security guard holding a pistol at him while this guy's burning and dying on the floor. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. What are your thoughts? Like, what do you guys think about this? Do you guys think this encourages suicide? Is it bad to glorify this or like glorify or give him credit for it? Like, wh where are you guys on this whole thing? I don't think anyone is glorifying suicide or anything. I think he had a statement and he felt this is the way to do it. It's not, I know, the ideal way, but it's it's what he felt he could do. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's important. I mean, self-immolation is, like he said, the most extreme form of protest you can do. And he's not the only person who's ever self-immolated. I mean, we had a bunch of people here in Lebanon who self-immolated. Yeah, like and Hamra very like recently. Like October, come in, the uh, uprisings. And mm -hmm. in Tunis, come in. It happens all the time. And there's a woman in Atlanta who did it a few months ago. Uh, she remained anonymous. But yeah, I think it's important what he did. I think the only people who are saying he's glorifying suicides are like the annoying liberal Zionists who want to kind of take away from what he did mm. yeah so. and make him look like an idiot even though like he, it's documented that this guy is like a leftist and stuff people got onto his reddit and saw what he's been yeah. doing and posting so i think uh, i don't know i mean he makes me cry honestly every time i see that video the, that photo of him too that picture of him smiling he seems he reminds me a lot of, of of one of my old friends um i for me one of the things like what i felt was um even if I disagree with what he did or if I think like a lot of people are saying he died for nothing. This isn't going to do anything. Of course, this isn't going to end the war, but everybody's talking about him now. Like I know this man's name. You know what I mean? F millions of people around the world now know this man's name. And are th every time they mention him, they're going to think about Palestine. I also think even if he shouldn't have killed himself or even if he was maybe mentally ill and I don't know, like wasn't supposed to do this, like at least for his parents, like the memory of his parents and his family and his friends and his loved ones. How fucked up is it to go out and say, like, yeah, he died for nothing. He didn't do any, like, no, something came out of his death. He made a massive fucking statement. And, like, CNN talked about this. CNN, like, all mainstream media that normally stays away from these things and they don't want to talk about it. Like, CNN read his final statement out loud, live on TV. Uh, everything he wanted to say. 
So like that's incredible. Like he made a massive impact. This man is not like Hamas put out a statement uh, like thanking this man for what he did. So definitely it's very conflicting. I think honestly, I think this man's a fucking badass to be completely honest with you. I think the amount of courage and conviction that it takes to do this and not yeah, to, to have the strength to do that. If he just wanted to kill himself, there are way less painful ways. He chose the most painful way to go so yes even if even if you do want to say that he's mentally ill and he would have killed himself anyway bro this man went out with a fucking bang like he made that this is gonna sound fucked up but like he made that suicide count like if he was gonna go out anyways he was like you know what i'm gonna make this count like yeah he made sure his voice was heard he sent a very loud message very disturbing to watch i would never encourage anyone to do this i would never like it's not like i would I, like, as much as i want to help palestine i would never do this you know what i mean like there's a million things that i would think of doing it instead of this but so no. to disrespect him i think is fucked up and what's beautiful is that uh, a bunch of other u.s army veterans went to, to the scene of where it happened and they started burning their u.s military uniform which is fucking insane check this out <laughs> giving me goosebumps right now watching it honestly and why i think this is important and like i know millions of pe pe people are dying in gaza every day standing up to 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 to, to the idf i don't mean to point this man out like just because he's white or anything but the fact that he is this white american guy who serves in the u.s military does mean a lot because People are dying in Gaza every day. It's not changing anything. You know what I mean? People aren't talking about it. You, some, you, he, like, you need this guy to do this in a way for, for Americans to take note. Like one of our own service men. And, and the Americans love thanking the military and, and thank you for your service. And they love the thank you. Like you, you can buy a magnet and put it on your car and everything. They love thanking the military. So when one of your own goes up there and burns himself alive, streamed, he streamed it online too. Like this guy was, he really did like everything right. Like very smart. Uh, Aaron Bushnell. We salute you, sir. Uh, rest in power, man. Uh, let's switch to I said you have sad news, actually, folks. And weirdly enough, we talked about this a few weeks ago, folks. Uh, we've been told that it's our fault that he died. But Fadi Ibrahim, famed legendary Lebanese actor, Fadi Ibrahim, has sadly passed away. Uh, we talked about him just a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about Lebanese actors doing TikTok Live. And do they need money? Are they doing it because they can't find work? And we used Fadi Ibrahim as an example because he was at the time very ill. He was in the hospital. He had like lost a leg and he was struggling to pay for his treatment. And they were asking like they were getting out, going on TV and, and trying to raise money from people and stuff. And I was just saying like, you know, you know, look at how he ended up. Maybe a lot of these actors don't want, you know, are in a similar position. So they need to make money. So I was just trying to use it as an example as to why not to judge these people. But so no, he ended up dying and it's super sad, even though like I don't watch a lot of the things that he's in. But so no. Ever since I was a kid, this man was on TV. No, I, he's like in every Lebanese he, drama he, ever. Yeah. He's in everything. I've seen him through the ages. He has watched me grow up through the television screen. Yeah, and, uh, so it was very sad, honestly, to see that he passed away. Ooh, um, we just have some videos. When he kept, so I, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but they say that this was from the hospital. Someone visited him and he was singing with Mustache. Well, let's see one of his final moments. Uh, what a wonderful world. It is of dream. Red roses through, I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Pepcom. Yeah, man, always a showman, even in, even in death. By the way, all his videos of him singing this song. <laughs> I, I know, I noticed, because here's another one that I found of him singing. I think it's the only song he knew. God bless you, Fadi. <laughs> Rest in peace. I see trees of green, <laughs> red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Why are you laughing, Kenny? Trying to get canceled? <laughs> no. This man just died. <laughs> It was just a very random, like, is he meeting a fan? I don't yeah, know. That, no, it's a random thing to do when you meet a That's kind of thing. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, what if I had asked him, like, hey, can I take a selfie with you? Does he sing this yeah. every time <laughs> like, someone asks for a selfie? Would he get, uh, like, in your face and look at you like that? When he has yeah, a it's very intimate. But he's like, yeah, a bit. He seems just like Hika. he loves what he does. You know what I mean? A true artist. Yeah. Hone, he has a message for the Lebanese people, folks, that should give us hope. <laughs> خلينا نرجع نعمل وطن
You guys heard the man, okay? Love each other, be good to one another. All right, take it fina nibne watan ma bad. The best there was one person, folks, who um Zaj, I guess men mot uh Fadi Ibrahim. Wahida waji sir, I know he's had to stop his TikTok live, folks. You know what Jih said? Waji loves <laughs> Where well, she loves his TikTok, we got some pushback from his fans out of TikTok. And Olesh, by the Knezi Fina TikTok Live, who the greatest Lebanese actor has just died. And shouldn't you out of respect? Colleague, your colleague, and shouldn't you out of respect that what Iflak Shinhar? This is what his response. Marahib, as near Ujudna ala live, Fetu Nislana is Aluna Lemish Hedin ala Fadi Brahim. Mahada Zed behad al Modua, Fadi Brahim, who is Sadi, was a meal, and Habu Adib Dini, was a little bit of a بس نحن نحزن عليه بنهار الدفن اكيد بس رح امتنع انا اطلع على اللايف بنهار الدفن نهار الخميس وبتمنى يلي قادر من الزملاء انه يكون نهار الخميس هو يوم صلاه عن نفس المرحوم فاد ابراهيم وبليز لكل الاشخاص الموجودين على اللايف ما يشيروا علينا شو لازم نعمل نحن راشدين وبنعرف شو لازم نعمل وبنعرف امتى لازم نحزن وامتى مش لازم نطلع على تيك توك فاقتضى التوضيح الكينج ما حدا يقول له لوجيهم انت ما يفتح تيك توك هلا كمان انه الناس وات دو ذي اكسبكت انه اف سم ون دايد انه يو تراي نوت اند اب انه تيك توك از هيز جوب كان ما حيقولوا له خد اوف و... من شغل بالعكس يعني ذس از جونا ساوند ريلي فاكت اب بس انه هي سا وات هابند تو فادي ابراهيم هيز لايك يو نو وات ام نوت جونا اند اب لايك ذات اي غوت تو ميك اول ذا ماني اي كان رايت ناو اي ام جونا اون تيك توك لايف افري فاكينج داي فور 12 اورز اند اي ام جونا فاكينج Bankroll my my family, you know. خلاص إنه بدو he got to. He doesn't want to end up like Fadi. I know. I know. Jad لبدون يي عطل or I like to do nothing. And I'm like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Zumale, but yelli adir on Thursday. And مش قادرين كأنه they're all like addicted to the, all these boomer actors. Like I gotta get on TikTok live. Which hey, I get it. They're making bank. Uh, anyways, Fadi Ibrahim, R.I.P. Karin, I saw you. Any words on Fadi Ibrahim? First of all, um, I mean, I used to watch him with Hasarat. He was a good guy. <laughs> he was a good actor. He wasn't everything, as you said. He L- was. Uh, he, he really wasn't everything. Would Damon can he call bad guy? Really? No, no. He, w- he sometimes he'd play the affable father. Ah, oh, Jed. Yeah, and like okay, Ruby, he was the rich that. dad. Shout out Ruby fans. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. He's been in a lot of things. Anyway, Haram. Yeah, when I heard about his amputation and everything, I was like. It's messed up. Huh? Yeah. And yeah, I have, it I have is. one more thing to add about the situation. Ah, C tree. Agree. Red roses too. You you were pushing your cookie away. What you said? Oh, um, the aftertaste hit. Oh, it has an aftertaste, huh? It has an aftertaste. It tastes like. I don't know what it tastes like. It just it's bad. It's bad. Never mind. It's bad. <laughs> I take like, back I would, what I said. Yeah, because you were like, I'm gonna eut the whole thing. Best kind of backup. They're gonna think I'm not kidding. How behind the scene to to like. I was not spoken to behind the scenes. No, no, no. What, guys? Shuana, I don't care. People we are allowed to like. That, okay? We don't do that. The wafers weren't that bad. The do- doctor food the wafers dark. The dark ones. Nati seven or dark. Maybe even an eight on on a good day when <laughs> I'm feeling generous. Do you feel generous. like you have to rate everything now? My bad. The maestro, the maestro, crunchy chocolate. I'm a habito. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Elijah, keep it down. I don't want to lose. Let's get. Let's Meister, please. Can I talk about live? Hello, Asari. Live. Let's just. A couple of tarfun ana said I love throwing roses to my favorite uh, TikTokers. They ulo ismna, and it's become an addiction. Hal hal. Abel, I was waiting for Noor and Karim to come here, folks. I got a couple of fresh ones. The ayun kun hey the wajih sair. Hey the ayun kun. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Shufu shufu mala wahd shufu. Janan, do not do not worry. Podcast. Hello, Abu Janan. Thank you, Habib Al. Bro, I love this man. I love this man. Yeah, and hell, yeah, and he's he, like I would love to meet him. That's the thing, you know what I mean? Like I had other idols in Zamin that I would want to meet. Now it's this guy. We got Fadi Sherbil coming, huh? Hey, this one's kind of annoying. Lano, Wajih ma biskutu, ma bkhalian nisma shu bihul Fadi. Tano Wajih baad ma tisa. Shadhal mil miya. 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 Guys, 
Hello, This is a weekly podcast where we talk about everything in Lebanon and, and, and cringe. He said string, I think, and, and everything string. Yalla, hala, sala, fiko. But he said podcast. He said podcast. Sah, but wajih ma biskut. Yalla, hala, guys, double points. Nazlo, nazlo. Ma adan nisma shan biul fadi. But thank you, fadi. But now they're aware of like. The Do Not Worry podcast. Ma bi yitzakar. Apparently, someone told me that he was talking about us once. Fadi or Zalin min kun aushi. Apparently not. No, I don't think Do Not Worry podcast. Ah. No idea. Anna naji zakariya, folks. Hey, the shway tawil, but bear with me. This is like an, a minute and a half, but because he kept thanking me. Uh, he didn't, my, there was like five people watching and it took him a while yeah, to, to thank me. But no, we got there. Hey, naji zakariya, the king. Hey, the bella shi halafi. Estes naji zakariya. We love you. Do you know naji? King of uh, Taufir. Malik of Taufir. Uh, you guys have shown him. Bishab Jamal. He okay. shows. He teaches you how to save money. Yeah. In various ways. Whether recharging batteries in very dangerous ways, <laughs> okay. uh, cooking, buying cheap ingredients. He's the king of Bishab Is he right? always on live? A lot of times. Recently. With, uh, with random ass Recently, people. Yeah. My, uh, he doesn't care who he's with, he'll just get on live. Okay. <laughs> and I gotta get the man's attention, you know? So. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I didn't get his attention. I'm trying to get some more attention. <laughs> Look at me. Do not worry. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Harry. Don't you? Thank you. Don't you? Thank you. Don't you? Oh, he gets more, you know. I'm like, how far can I take this? <laughs> Thank you. Don't worry. Do not worry. Podcast. Yes, Lamo. It's satisfying. Thank you. Thank you. Me too, Habib Lal. Me too, Habib Lal. Vivo, bonjour, bonjour, Habibi. Vivo, hello. I liked how it felt. I liked him say the name. Merci, Habibi, merci, merci, Ktir. Merci, Al Wurud. Hanan, ya halab, Hanan. You made his day. How much money did you spend on it? Like a buck? Less how much is a rose? Five cents. Oh, okay. Mivo. كيفك انت حبيب القلب؟ انا انا اسمي بعد ميرسي 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 دونت وري بودكاست ميرسي على روزز كلكم ذوق بدي سلامتكم يا خيي حبيب حبيب الله يا هلا وات ا جاي وات ا جاي سو روز اي ثينك فور 30 سنتس يو كان جيت لايك 10 ما بتذكر شو الاسعار شو فينا الاسعار كان يو باي 20 كوينز فور 29 سنتس 99 cents gets you 65 coins. I've been doing the 99 cents ones because خلاص بطلنا صار عم كب كيب 10 15. إيه شو نحنا خلاص بكب وردة أنا بكب 15. So it's very cheap and and TikTok keeps 70 percent and you only get 30 percent. So TikTok's making a killing. You know what I mean? That's what's actually happening. Hey, this random video, folks. Elijah Bato. I don't know why he was watching this live. It's this old lady with this other lady. He sent it on the WhatsApp group like, yeah, look how sweet this is. This lady was talking about how she lost all her money in the bank. And then this guy threw her away. Look how sweet it is. And oh, well, gonna... she, this lady, he's referencing Lady Madonna. <laughs> okay. Maaroufa <laughs> here? Lady Madonna, yeah. Ma ba'arifa, but she did not seem at all like, she didn't at all seem like a nobit chef. She was just like, She's kind of asking for money. The guy that he kabbala the whale, she was kind of, you know, like indirectly, you know, pressuring him. Like, hey, the ex, I'm be kabbala, ma ba'ir if I know a leil, inshallah, kabbala, be kabbala. And she wasn't sweet, but there's just one thing that's hilarious. Hello, hachu for this other lady. This Ella, the old lady, that the young one, you know, like, oh, lead on ahlik, are your parents fine? And he tell her, ana ahli meto. Look how the other lady reacts. Shufu should be seen. It's the funniest thing ever. انت وردة ما عم بقولك ما بضوى قد ما انت مضواية اكس حبيبي ليلى عندي ما في ضوء تقبريني حدك ما في ضوء ليلى في داعم لقلي بحبه كثير اسمه اكس مش عم بقول لي اسمه بس دعمني كثير يعني الليلى يا ريت كل ليلى ضل حدي لانه كله بضل حدك ضل حدك يقف حدك طبعا العمر كله
ان شاء الله بيضل حدي حبيبتي وانت كمان الله يبعد لك حدا يعرف قيمتك ما هو الانسان اذا مع حد بيكون مع شخص ما بيعرف قيمته لا شو واحد احسن من شو حتى اشعار اخر يجي حدا يعرف قيمته ويضوي له حياته حبيبتي دخيل دعواتك انا واهلك وامك موجودين لا انا ماما وبابا توفوا من زمان لا حوت اجاني حوت تذكرين حوتك انا لا حوت اجاني حوت هذيك شيز اوبننج اب ان وبيي توفوا ولا صار لهم زمان حوت كبل لي حوت برو ذا فانيست مومنت ايفر يعني اميزنج امي بعد ما يسكن في جوست لايك 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 ا كابوي هات عليه وان شي سيز اهلي ماتوا لايك يجي كابوي هات عليه هي عم تقول هيك يو نو ايت لايك ذي دايت تراجيدي ان ا كار اكسيدنت مع كابوي هات ذات بن ذات بن شيري اون توب بس انه لا حوت سمعت قد حقه ذا ويل لايك 25 بوكس بيرن اتس نوت ذات ماتش اهلك وامك موجودين لا انا ماما وبابا توفوا من زمان لا حوت اجاني حوت تذكر اجاني حوت برو لا ذا 3 باكس ا داي برو ذا سامبيك سامبيك اب اجاني حوت اي لوف اي لوف ذس مور ذان ووردز كان اكسبريس اي لوف ات فوكس سو اي جوت كانسلد لاست ويك ليت اس جيت تو ات ليت اس جيت تو انستغرام نزلوا في اوكي سو هاو ديد ات اول ستارت از يو نو وي ديد ان ابيسود وير وي توكت اباوت وات ديان نجار But what really got me in trouble was uh, this reel that I made and dropped on, made the mistake of putting on Instagram and on TikTok. Uh, let's watch it just for background. I don't agree with this. I disown everything in this video, folks. I disown everything that I said. Let's ignore it. Jamea, we have to talk about Wadiya Al-Najjar. He's a very famous influencer. He's now in Dubai Blink Season 2. He's Elisa's best friend. But he's got a face that no man is safe. She hit by it. Someone on TikTok compared him to handsome Squidward man. It's a good comparison, but I think I have a much better one. بيشبه gay Thanos. ما تقولوا لي لا. He looks like a gay version of Thanos. And by the way, I'm not saying this to hate on gay people. All the left to the gay community. Anyways, رح نحكي أكتر بكتير عن وديع النجار. That disclaimer did nothing to help me. Believe it or not. <laughs> by the way, no hate to the gay community. They're like, hey, just because, yeah, no, no one was buying that. <laughs> even though. لا أنا لا أنا I'm not racist. I have a black friend. And no, yeah, but I'm like, no, shoot for the wood. I was just like, just clarifying, yeah. <laughs> And we're going to rate his best and worst outfits on the podcast tonight. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's a good shot, right? All right. So this did not go well, folks, on Instagram. Uh, the Instagram was not happy. Uh, I got a couple of... It went really bad, I, I got a couple of comments on YouTube. But so most of the people that were upset came from Instagram. A lot of them maybe have never seen the show. No, no. Pest, look, if I, I have a whole list of reasons why I made this segment, folks. I'm going to go through it one by one. But so let's start with reading some of the comments. And no, I agree. No, look. We, we talked about this guy for 25 minutes on the last episode. 25 minutes of looking at his outfits. I definitely overdid it, okay? There's a couple of things that I'm, I'm going to defend, uh, but there's some things that you know, I don't think I need to defend, and I, I will die on, on that hill, folks. Uh, sh- should I start with reading comments or, like, basically talking about Let's read some comments. Let's see some comments. There's a whole lot of them, so uh, be patient. We're not going to read all of them. Don't read a lot of them. So no Just other. pick a few, I know. But they're pretty good. So, okay, Mirna Tabit says, Why the bullying on someone's appearance and an episode to mock him? I don't find this funny. Uh, new account who this says, Stop being a fucking bully. Your whole show is based on bullying and saying negative things about people. Get a grip, dude, and stop hating. Uh, Maya says, Anthony, you and people like you are the same people who keep complaining about how our society is shitty and how our society is judgmental, blah, blah, and yet you keep practicing the same behavior that gets us here. Picking on people, rating their appearance as if that's the only thing important about a person. To change your narrative to create a better society for the next generations. I grew up with their weight. Uh, I grew up with the weight of what society has to say about how I look and what I wear, and that gave me a lot of problems as an adult. Do yourself and us a favor and change this silly narrative. Like, man, there's literally billions and billions of issues you can talk about beside a person's appearance. Yeah, but like, come on, guys. He looks very, very unique. And if <laughs> You're you di- not helping. I'm, look, I don't need to, you know, خلص, you know, she cancels. She just doesn't care. She doesn't watch the show. And even if you did your job by saying, oh, my respect to the gay community, it doesn't work this way. You know pretty well that our society already doesn't accept people for, from the LGBTQ community. So for you to put the spotlight on a gay influencer will not change how society perceives the gay community, but it will reinforce hate. 
Uh, she kept going. It will not change how society perceives the gay community, but it will reinforce hate. You know very well who are the people interested in watching stuff like that and making fun of other people, and it's definitely not the intellectuals. Is that the audience you're trying to please? If so, stop portraying yourself as a progressive, because this is nothing but. Uh, here we have uh, DJ Dashka. No, that's homophobic and bullying. Just FYI, Anthony, I'm un unfollowing because this is cringe. We got Makil says, yeah, that's pretty homophobic. So generally, that was the vibe. There's a few, let's, uh, one more. Roni Moon says, okay, you criticize the person for how he looks. Now it's time to do a live episode where you go live and people join the episode to criticize how you look. Because when dish it out, you have to take it back. That's, that's just stupid. Then I said, <laughs> lol, you liked your own comment. He liked his own comment, by the way. Which is always funny when a post has one like and it's the own per I was, it, was, it was weird. Uh, we got another one. Uh, zero one thousand ten. He says, why are you so obsessed with another man? You actively took a lot of time from your day to record and edit a clip about him. Are you gay? I didn't get, like I didn't get where that was going. I'm like I'm like I'm like if I were gay, would that be a problem? Like Mamba Fum, are you like, worth a shot? <laughs> he's saying, he's worth saying that you're shot. making fun of him because you want him. Yeah, I guess so. Like he's so like he's not he's doing what I'm doing basically. Worse, um, Reem Reef says if you're gonna criticize how people look, at least start by looking good yourself. That's what I love when people are upset about you bullying someone. They bully, they you. bully you. You, you know what crazy. I mean? Like why are you saying this man looks ugly? By the way, you're ugly. It's like okay, at least practice what you preach. Anyways, there's a few more. We don't need to read all of them. Actually, I'm gonna read this one. This is from a viewer of the show, uh, V Vis. He comments often and stuff. He says, this reel itself isn't homophobic, but after watching the episode, honestly, man, that was pretty bad. Still not the homophobic, still not homophobic, and granted, he doesn't look like anyone I've ever seen before. I watched Dubai Bling and couldn't not comment on it. But no need to go out of your way with 25 solid minutes of circling around and back to how he looks like stuff of nightmares. And I'm going to end it there because I think he kind of, this is kind of what I think I fucked up at. Like, look, I will defend that. He looks like gay Thanos. You can disagree, you can get mad. He looks like Thanos. If he were gay, he looks like a giant... Uh, it doesn't matter, okay? I will defend that. I don't think it's homophobic to say that. And I also, I got a lot of people saying, like, you can't say that a person looks gay. Or, like, you can't determine that someone is gay based on how they look. You can't always tell that a person is gay by looking at them, okay? 90% of the time, you probably can't tell. But are you going to sit here and tell me, seriously, that you've never seen a person who like, ooh, this dude is probably gay or this woman is probably gay. Like, it obviously happens. There are people that absolutely look gay. Wadia is one of these people. Now, even if he looked gay, but if he wasn't openly gay, I never would have called him gay. There was like a bunch of articles online that I found that were like, he's openly gay, so I felt comfortable to be like, he's gay. If he wasn't publicly out, even though he looks 100% gay, I wouldn't have said it. But so no, he just looks gay. You can be like, no, you can't say that. Yes, you can, okay? You're all fucking liars. And I have a very good gaydar, okay? I said it in one of my videos, like seven out of ten times. I can tell that someone's gay. I can just tell you, hey, maybe you can too, maybe you can't. But so no, saying that no one looks gay, no, okay? You can't say that. Where I think I fucked up is that I spent 25 minutes making fun of what this guy looks like on an episode where I could have just been like, he looks like gay Thanos, <laughs> isn't that funny? And I could have moved on. We could have just moved on, you know what I'm saying? But I sat there for 25 minutes looking at outfits. I, like, I watched the segment again. I felt like... A boomer like I'm seeing myself and I felt like I was kind of like like why is he wearing this outfit what what is he doing I'm like he's just wearing an outfit bro like who cares so I can explain folks okay uh do you know like do you want to know why it happened it happens okay people fuck up I talk a lot folks okay I have a show <laughs> we release an hour and a half to two hour episode every week this is episode number 125 I talk a fuckload there are hours upon hours upon hours of me saying shit on the internet one point or another, I'm going to put my foot in my mouth and I'm going to say something fucking stupid or I'm going to make a mistake. That episode was one of them. I ain't proud of it. It's even called the worst episode we ever did. Like, I don't even want people it's to click on title. it. It's in the title. You can't watch it and not like it and tell me it sucked. I know it sucked. It's in the title. So, um, so that's going to happen, okay? I'm going to make more mistakes if we do another 125 episodes. Y'all best believe that. I say stupid shit all the time, you know what I mean? It's on camera, and I, this, this is gonna happen, okay? So the more I do this, the more I'm gonna say stupid shit. B, okay? I don't consider influencers human beings. That, that's, that might sound weird. Like, I don't consider them as like real people. They're rich, they have money, they're famous, they're Haida. So deja, there's like this wall between me and them. On top of that, Wadia genuinely does not look like any person I've ever seen. So the fact that he looks so out of this world he felt like even less of a real person, so he was like a caricature. So it felt like I could say anything I wanted, 
and like he wasn't a real person but he is a real person and i shouldn't do this and you know what i mean like i'll admit it because i got some comments i'm capitulating to the woke community i'm not i wouldn't say this unless i actually agreed you know what i'm saying uh I fucked up. It was mean. 27 minutes on this guy. He's probably a very nice guy. Or he's a horrible person. I really don't know. Uh, but so no, me talking about his outfits for 27 minutes, I ain't proud of it. And I do apologize if it offended or upset anyone. He still looks like gay Thanos. You can tell he's gay from a fucking million miles away. But does not give me the right. And some people were like, you're using the fact that he's gay against him. I didn't feel like that. But so maybe at some point I said something that sounded like homophobic. Again, 27 minutes of me saying stupid shit. But so what I can definitely con confirm is that I'm not homophobic, folks. If you've been watching the show for three years, you don't even need me to tell you. If I were homophobic, you, would, you can tell. Three years of watching this, like, little microaggressions or blood tishon are there. Like, I have gay cousins that are married, folks. Gay best friends. Like, it doesn't even matter. I don't even need to talk about this. But so no, obviously, I have nothing but love for the gay community. But so no, I don't want to upset anyone. And of course, I'm not like, when I fuck up, I'm more than happy to admit it. I have a whole list of things because I don't want to forget something, folks. This is how, how seriously I take this. Hell yeah. Does it mean that we're not allowed to joke about gay people? Because like, I'll look like a transphobe or I'm giving ammunition to actual homophobes to make fun of gay people. But look, sometimes gay people are funny. And sometimes gay people do things that are stupid or fun that like I kind of want to make fun of. But so no, I get it, especially that we live in Lebanon. And if I say something about a gay person, assholes are going to use that and like, you know what I mean? Like, make it worse. Like, oh, yeah. It's like, that's not what I meant, you fucking idiot. So, I get it. You know, so I guess we can't joke about gay people. Uh, oh, yeah. I was asked, or I was told, like, and I considered deleting the episode. I never delete anything. So, I was like, I kind of, you know, should I delete it? Does this, does this reflect badly on me if, it, if I keep it up? Best, if you guys have been following up with a lot of the Palestine stuff and you've been watching Norm Finkelstein interviews, uh... It's part of the historical record. So yeah, that's my Norm Finkel scene. I, I, like, I like the fact that if I fuck up in an episode, I like it to stay up because I learn from it and I, we grow from it in the next episode, we address it. I don't want to delete it. It's just a little mistake, you know what I'm saying? But like it's a, it's a learning moment that we learn from and we grow and we move on together. And I genuinely do feel bad that I made fun of him and it really ruined, like, I don't want to make this about me. He was the victim. I made fun of him in a, for 27 minutes. So no, I did feel bad for him. At least three days, let me, I can say that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, come in, it's just part of the pressure on it to be entertaining, you know what I mean? Like, uh, 125 episodes, our last few episodes have been getting more views because of, like, the Dr. Food drama that had happened and the Feddo stuff, so, come in, there's this pressure of, I need to entertain these people, and I need fun topics. Let's talk about this for 25 minutes, and yalla, like, the pressure of having to ha make entertaining videos every week for an hour and a half and two hours, come in, that gets to you, and it makes you make decisions that, Maybe aren't the smartest, you know what I mean? I could have found another topic to talk about. Uh, what do you guys have to say about it? Noor, you were there with me, laughing along, <laughs> not not <laughs> defending <laughs> Wadiya. You're complicit. Fair, to be fair, uh, I was defending him. I didn't defend him on podcast. <laughs> oh, hello, you're throwing me under the bus. No, <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, you were throwing me mock. <laughs> I'm sure that <laughs> I'm not kind, I was defending him. You were just sitting there. Yeah, I'm out to By the shoot. way, um, what I wanted to say, I know when we were filming that, and you when you said he was gay, is it on Modo at first? And I said allegedly because I wasn't sure that he's if he's out or not. But when you explained that he is actually out, I was like more comfortable talking about it. But I think the joke yeah, you that Instagram audience land so out of context. And they thought you were making fun of him because he's gay, not because he looked like Thanos. He just looked like Thanos. That's it. That that was the whole thing. Was he? What was he? Wadia, yeah, Wadia. Wadia is gay. Thanos is not gay. If Wadia looks like Thanos, he looks like a gay version of Thanos. That's the joke. That's it. <laughs> that you was didn't. the joke. It probably wasn't that funny. And to me, I just uh, couldn't unsee it. I'm like, oh, he looks like Thanos. That's it. I just wanted to share with the world. I'll never do that again. But hey, you, did, you were a bit harsh, Bill. Uh, yeah, yeah. Podcast. It, it was pointless, pointless. 27 minutes of useless. I, I, I wish I could take but it back. By the way, like the rating outfits part, I, I know. I know that was pretty cool. We weren't like bullying him or anything. I know. Eh. Few fashion police had. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that, that's right. We were the fashion police. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Go, go call them bullies. Uh, Karin, any, any, uh, what, what do you think? Should I have been canceled? I, I watched. Uh, I watched the episode. I didn't feel like you were homophobic. Honestly, <laughs> it didn't give homophobia. Um, Thank you. 
and he hey, does was, he does look like it Gaetano. was mean just not homophobic it was mean it was uh, definitely mean it's fine if it's mean we're allowed to make fun of influencers and rich people as a treat right like i think we're, <laughs> we good. should be allowed to make fun of you, these people this guy's friends with elisa you think he's sitting here crying about, uh, about exactly. anthony being mean to him he us doesn't give a fuck about us us peasants he's must be allowed with money to 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 bring down the influencer class actually i take back the apology folks <laughs> fuck that guy <laughs> anyways yeah I, i'm sorry if anyone really got upset Anjad, i apologize a genuine uh, apology i'm sorry too Okay, let's get to Frogan, folks. This is kind of a long topic. I don't know how to talk about this because you guys, my audience, Lebanese audience, you guys don't care about this because you don't know the HP podcast for the most part. This is very much uh, US-based stuff as we have to do this because for our girl Frogan, I'm going to try to uh, make this as interesting as I can. This podcast that you guys are watching is inspired by a, an American podcast called the H3 Podcast, hosted by Ethan Klein and occasionally his wife, Ela Klein. Uh, Ethan is Jewish American, but he's also a dual citizen. He's Israeli as well. And his wife is full on Israeli. She was in the IDF. He met her in Israel. They got married, etc. They moved to the States and they host this podcast, which I tried to copy as many elements from as I can. Uh, don't believe me. Even the logo, folks. Our logo is inspired by this. They have a clothing brand called Teddy Fresh, designed by Ela. This was one of their shirts. Uh, this was the logo on the shirt, the Teddy Fresh logo. Oh, I never knew This that. is the most direct like comparison <laughs> that you can make with our logo. I loved everything about that podcast. I watched it religiously. They dropped like four episodes a week. I would watch like three of those episodes. Yeah, and I would watch these guys literally for like nine hours a week. I love this podcast. And I would call myself the Lebanese Ethan Klein. Uh, he's been sued multiple times on the podcast. I've been hit with, with five lawsuit threats. <laughs> yeah, and it's really been... And I really think I've been able to accomplish my mission of like being like the Lebanese H3. So I, I love this podcast. And I've spent thousands of dollars on Teddy Fresh clothes. You guys have seen me wear it over. I can, I can bring out the stack of Teddy, clothes, of Teddy Fresh clothes that I have. I have tons of hoodies, jackets, t-shirts. I've spent at least, at least like $2,000 on Teddy Fresh clothes. So I have supported these people financially over like four years or something. I've literally been watching and following their stuff. So I really, really love them. But they kind of broke my heart. Uh, during once the October 7th attack happens and happened and stuff because they like really flipped into like Zionist mode or like semi-Zionist. And I don't think Ethan deep down is a Zionist. Like for example, in 2023, can feed the attack be Al-Aqsa Mosque, be Palestine. They actually like put out a very good statement. I felt him and Eli because I was kind of concerned. I'm like, okay, are they going to talk about this? I'm kind of uncomfortable watching the show. They put out a whole statement. And they were like, they they... Uh, multiple times referred to Netanyahu as like a crazy genocidal motherfucker, his extremist right-wing government. They've defended the rights of Palestinians. I was like, okay, you know what? They've said enough as to where I can still feel comfortable watching their show, even though they're Israelis. So anyways, when October 7th happened, uh, Ethan, they talked about it on the podcast a lot. Ethan hosted a political show with a guy called Hassan Abi. A lot of you guys might know him. He's a political commentator. He does Twitch streams. So him and Ethan host a show called Leftovers. And they did a whole episode for like three hours where they talked about Palestine and Israel. Ethan was coming from the Israeli side. Hassan was coming from the Palestinian side. Uh, it was a very nice talk. I thought they made a lot of progress. Things were looking good. But after that episode, Ethan started to make a lot of remarks that seemed to be basically repeating IDF and Zionist talking points. For example, so remember that one time where uh, one of the many times where the IDF hit the hospital in Gaza, it was like the massive explosion. Everyone was talking about it. Ethan went on his podcast and was like, I don't think the IDF would do this. It's probably Hamas who hit themselves, etc. The Palestinians did it. That was the first IDF talking point that he repeats. Here's a video of him and his wife doing a, a, a stream where they're reacting to one of their employees, one of their interns, uh, retweets. She retweeted something that said, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. This is what they had to say about that. Olivia, there's Olivia Hay. Olivia is their Anybody employee. Hate Olivia? No, actually, they're supporting her. Okay. But I actually need to say that this is not a good post to like. From the river to the sea, literally, is saying that we we need all, all of Israel must be ours. See, I think that's part of the problem yeah, is that people <laughs> don't necessarily understand what some of this stuff means. Yeah. Like Olivia true. probably doesn't even know what from the river to the sea reference means. And look how weird this is. They're talking about their own employee on a video. Imagine me talking about N Noor, what you retweeted. And I'm talking about it publicly. Like, yeah, Noor doesn't know what she's talking about. She's retweeting this, but she doesn't know what it means. And they're basically saying that, yeah, if you say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Then you're calling for the death of all Jews. That is another IDF Zionist talking point. 
So that was another thing that made me very uncomfortable with Ethan and Ela. And again, Ela served in the IDF in Israel. Uh, it's mandatory conscript conscription. You can't not join the military. You have to join the military. So she, if she had the choice, she may have not have joined. But it is important to say that she was in the military. I also have a five minute clip of her telling a story of she went on a raid once. It's a five minute conversation where she just she just for fun. She went with this other group of IDF soldiers on a raid. And I forget the name of the town. And they broke into someone's house. They searched the house. She just went there and talked about it. And as she was telling the story, she even made a joke like, yeah, they took me because I was cute, for example. Very disrespectful, I found. Uh, uncalled for. Most recently, you guys know Frogan. Here's our girl Frogan from the Arabs pod. Okay, here's in case anyone doesn't remember, here's Frogan, and here is the Arabs pod. They're all sitting there. We talk about the show all the time. We love the Arabs. We got Capri, we got Raf, and we got Frogan. So Ethan has had it out for Frogan. Uh, it's been a couple of months. When October 7th happened, Frogan put out a tweet. I can't remember what it is, and I honestly didn't have time to find it. So no, basically, she was like, you know, celebrating the October seventh attack when it first happened most arabs were probably like fuck yeah go mm. palestine like they're prisoners they're treated like shit by by israel they're bombed all the time they're killed all the time the thought that some of them broke out and had like some kind of like revenge i'm not gonna lie it's kind of a nice feeling most arabs probably felt that way but we didn't know the extent etc neither did frogan so uh, once we found out what it was and like a lot of uh, innocent people died, Frogan obviously took it back. No one is happy when innocent people die. But Ethan like didn't let that go. He took her, her tweets and he kept on commenting on her tweets and he kept calling her like a fucking racist, genocidal, crazy person on... And Ethan's uh, H3, folks, is like one of the biggest podcasts in the world. It has 3 million, that 3 million subscribers on YouTube. Ethan has 2 million Instagram followers. Frogan is a Twitch streamer with like 55,000 followers she's huge and she's a very popular streamer but like nowhere near where ethan is so you have this massive creator with a massive platform calling out this relatively tiny creator and calling her like an anti-semite racist on his podcast to his millions of viewers so that did a lot of damage to frogan and like that obviously upset her a lot weeks later and months later had that completely unsolicited unsolicited like frogan has had no contact with ethan in months uh, Ethan brings up tweets that Frogan was talking about how once she went to a therapist and she found out that her therapist was a Zionist and how that made her very uncomfortable. This is Ethan commenting on her tweet and once again attacking Frogan out of nowhere completely. I'm going to say this because it pissed me the fuck off. And being an anti-Semite openly and proudly is now likes on Twitter. Frogan, mm -hmm. she tweeted out, she goes, my Zion I have a problem with my, uh, with my Zionist therapist. Just call him a fucking Jew. I'm sorry, but that you can't talk like that about any other fucking minority. I had a problem with my Zionist therapist. What you taught your Zionist therapist? Did you, did you get that those level of details from them? You 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 had an in-depth conversation about the politics of Zionism with your therapist? No, I know what you mean. You mean fucking Jew. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and be let my fucking people, you know. Be openly bigoted and racist. Fuck that shit. Nobody would expect that from any other minority. Nobody. It's disgusting. It is. And I'm here. I'm with you. I'm on. Okay, so what Ethan said here is completely, first of all, stupid and fucked up. And he's, he's conflating Zionism with Judaism, which is, again, another IDF a Zionist. Uh, thing that they like to do because if you associate Judaism with Zionism, then you have to defend what Israel does at all times. So uh, the fact that he's doing that is completely fucked up. And when the drama with Frogan happened, Frogan literally said Ethan was one of her favorite creators of all time. Even me, Ethan. Yo, bro. Uh, the fact that I used, um, I used the fact that I look up to you and modeled my podcast after yours and I supported Teddy Fresh for years because I love your show and I love your stuff. You being Jewish never had any impact on that, clearly. You know what I mean? It's when you started spitting out Zionist talking points and repeating what the IDF is repeating that I lost interest in you. The fact that you were Jewish never bothered me for all those years where I supported you and again spent thousands of dollars on Teddy Fresh. So you can't go label anyone who, who complains about Zionists as anti-Semitic. And ever since he did that, like look what's happening to Frogan. People are trying to get her banned off of Twitch now. There's this account, um, Stop Anti-Semitism. Hold it there, there, and anytime someone says anything remotely against Israel, they, they try to get you canceled. Here they are. Twitch, the largest streaming platform for gamers, has chosen someone, Frogan, real name Morgan, who celebrated the 10-7 the massacre as their legendary woman. This is a spit in the face of the 
plus people who were murdered on 10-7, countless women raped, and the uh, remaining kidnapped hostages being held in Gaza. They're literally trying to get Twitch to like kick her off the platform because of something she didn't say, and because Ethan Klein is upset, and for some reason obsessed with this small inf with a small creator, and he just wants to ruin her life. Is it because she's Muslim? Is it because she's veiled? Who knows? But so it's completely uncalled for. And so you, everyone watching this, you guys know this, you're all Lebanese, you're all Arabs. The reason I'm sharing this is we got to support Frogan. Okay, we got to support our girl Frogan. There's literally one of the biggest podcasts in the world trying to label her as anti-Semitic. They're ruining her life. Twitter is going after her. They're trying to get her off of Twitch. We can't let that happen yet. It's extremely unfair. We love Frogan. They've been so supportive of our, of our show. We love the Arabs podcast. Uh, go watch their episode right now. And it, we're shooting this. Uh, one day before their episode Yesterday, comes out. Yesterday, basically. Yeah, so their episode came out on Wednesday. Go watch it. Go watch their response. And we got to give Frogan all of our support. Yana. She's one of us. She's Lebanese. We, Yana, of course, Frogan is going to feel uncomfortable with a Zionist therapist when her country is currently being bombed right now with white phosphorus by Zionists. So again, it's insane to think that she doesn't have the right to say that because she absolutely does. And by the way, here's the tweet Yana, that um, she shared this in 2019, by the way. And again, like Ethan, had a, she, re she talked about this again recently, but so no, this was from 2019. She said, I just went to therapy for the first time. And after talking about my dad fleeing uh, the Israel-Lebanon war, she was like, I'm Israeli. Do you have any issues with me being your therapist? She's like, bro, I was so taken aback. And then like she asked her, do you think Israel has a right to exist, etc.? Like, do you want to remove your veil? All sorts of weird questions. So of course, Frogan is going to feel uncomfortable going there. So it's crazy that he would use that story to label her as anti-Semitic. Anjad Yanev. Uh, really? Ethan completely disregarded everything she said in that tweet and just assumed that she that she thought I know her therapist was a Bro, that he's was a being Zionist. So, and here is a video of Ela. This is a very just twenty seconds of like Ethan kind of saying that yeah, like the IDF does horrible things and Ela's in the background going like, No, they don't, I'm gonna deny that. Listen to this. How up Ethan I think Ethan, honestly, if he wasn't married to like a straight up Israeli woman and her whole family's Israeli and she was in the IDF, she's making it more extreme than he would have been otherwise. That's what I personally think. People are saying Israel does that on the daily, the idea. I don't, does that on the that's daily. not what I'm talking about. See, that's what you're doing. You're excuse, you're, you're excusing people being burned alive and kids being murdered. You're saying Israeli, Israel does that on the daily. Okay. Now I'm not denying that. I'm not denying it. I'm not denying okay. that. So are you, I'm in, that. so are Israel you in favor that. of an Iraqi, uh, She's like, I am. A I'm terrorist cell? And she was in the IDF. She's denying that the IDF kills and murders and burns uh, Palestinians on the daily, which they fucking do, Ela, you fucking know it. So, I don't know, October 7th broke their brains. We need to support our girl Frogan. Go watch their episode. I told her, uh, I'm bringing Joseph Medaib to Los Angeles, if Ethan mentions her again. <laughs> I'm bringing Joseph Medaib, Kung Fu Jesus, to LA. And uh, watch out, Ethan. Watch out, H3 Podcast. I can't believe this. Like, months ago, like six months ago, it would have been my dream to meet Ethan and like take a picture with him and the crew, go watch one of their live shows. I'm a fucking massive fan. I literally recreated their podcast here in Lebanon. And the fact that I can't even watch their show and enjoy it anymore, it kind of sucks. But uh, hey, sorry for the long topic. Uh, I know yeah, this really doesn't interest you guys, but one of our own is under attack. So uh, what do you expect us to do? Let's lighten the mood quickly. Since I'm outdoor Palestine, actually, Katrexa, I was launching your cookies, as you guys know, and they're going to be sold all over the Middle East. And I was shocked to hear one of the countries where I'm like, really? Yeah, and it's true. Guys, keep going. I don't know if you're going to be a little bit of 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 a little كثير منكم محمس انه يدوقوا وهو حيكون بكل <تصفيق> العالم العربي <تصفيق> يعني بلبنان سوريا فلسطين العراق فلسطين فلسطين برو كيدز ان غزه ماما ذي ار ايتينج انيمال فيد ذي ار اولسو غونا بي ايتينج كاتريكسا كوكيز اي ثينك اتس بيتر فور ذا كيدز بي غزه ياكلوا الانيمال فيد ان ما ياكلوا كاتريكسا كوكيز اي ثينك ذا كاتريكسا كوكيز ار غونا كوز مور ديزيزز اند مور يو نو مور فايروسز ذن than the, the garbage that the children of Gaza are currently eating. Khale, Anjad, giving a, a child be Palestine, Katrexa cookies. Last resort. Bad and sex scandal, my doctor food came in and my train had ulaid, can hekna asun. Katrexa cookies. Anyways, let's talk about Dune, folks. Let's talk about. 
Waladun. <laughs> so you, I asked you guys before we started filming, have you've not watched Waladun movie? Why have are you guys not interested? Why are you not Waladun? Why part one? Why part two? I'm, d- I'm really not interested. Mo- uh, no. I like long movies with nice visuals. But you like sci-fi. You like, you know... Th- I do. I do. But I know whenever I see it, the trailer or anything, I, I just don't feel like I want to watch it. Mom... Fair I enough. feel like there's nothing for me there. Mafia Ossa. Like ha- even in the trailer. But since you like you're both cine- you both you know, like movies, you're both cinephiles. You're I, both love I love movies. movies. <laughs> I love movies. Um, I like I mean I don't hate sci fi. I I like sci fi ish. D- depends. But um Dune I just I think because the first one didn't perform that well. People didn't like it that much from what I heard. And I wasn't like dedicated to it. So I was like, I'm not gonna waste like three hours. <laughs> to correct you, uh it actually it performed pretty well. It made four hundred million dollars worldwide. No, I- but it was during a pandemic. Matinson, when Dune came out, it was we were still in the middle of COVID, so theatrically it didn't make but a lot of money. They were saying that it was kinda bad. I no. don't mean money, I mean like uh, the movie. People don't like it that much. Oh, that's what I mean. That's got, what I heard. It won six Academy Awards. It got like said like an eighty something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I heard not that Oscars, I hate. In. No, it wasn't. It, look, <laughs> people said it was boring. Like the story I liked was it. shit. I thought too. the cinematography was great. I enjoyed it. But now I watched Dune Part Two, which everyone is saying it's the greatest movie of the last five years, greatest movie of the last ten years. Wow! Oh my God, Dune Part Two. Uh, I watched it in IMAX over the weekend and. I liked it. Like, it was nice. But to be honest with you guys, as an Arab, watching a bunch of, like, white people, U- U Benicio del Toro, U Zendaya cosplaying as Arabs in the desert and using our culture. Are they supposed to be Arabs? I don't <laughs> think they're supposed to be. I think well, it's inspired by. They're not supposed to be Arabs. But like, yeah, they're inspired yeah. by Arab culture. So the Fremen are basically Muslim Arabs living in the desert. You know what I mean? And, like, everything they say, like, they have all these words, like the, the giant uh, sandworms that they ride. They called Shai Hulud. We must ride the Shai Hulud. So you have a Spanish guy who's Zendaya and a bunch of white people in the desert. Appropri- and I, I, I hate using the word cultural appropriation, but with what's happening in the world, folks, with Palestinians being blown to bits, appropriation for a fucking Timothy Chalamet movie? Truly. Anna, Lisan El Gaib, they call Timothy Chalamet's character. Lisan El Gaib, yeah, the chosen one. They call it the, 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 the one who, the outsider, the one who speaks like the Lisan El Gaib. I think they meant Lisan El Gharib and Lisan El Gharib, the, the outside like tongue. But yeah. like, he is the Lisan El Gaib. He must ride the <laughs> Shai Hulud to become the Mu'adib. And then they call him, they have a nickname in the Basir Mu'adib. They call him the Mu'adib. So all these words, Arabic words, Shai Hulud, Mu'adib, deserts. There, there's a scene in the movie, folks, Wahiyat Allah. You know those Hamas videos that we see on Twitter with the red triangle? It's Zendaya with a rocket launcher. Timothy Chalamet is like behind her. They're like shooting at the, at the Harkonnen's huge ships. And it's basically Hamas versus IDF. That's what's also crazy. Like the, the plot of the movie? It's like you got these evil colonizers coming to the, the Arab planet to steal the resources. And the Arabs uh. are like fighting back. But they're led by a white guy, of course. The chosen one has to be, uh, you know, Lisan al Gaib, the, the Mu'adib, uh, Timothy Chalamet. So, <laughs> so you got these brown people in the desert. They need Timothy Chalamet to come tell them. This has been done before. Avatar, Pocahontas, Dances with Wolves. You got the white guy who goes, joins the tribe. Basole, it's usually, they're, they're, they're ripping off Native American cultures. You know, they're culturally appropriating all these other natives. Uh, no, I think uh, Lawrence of Arabia did the same thing. Lawrence of Arabia, come in, the same thing, exactly. When he came, he led the Arabs to victory. He's te- they can't win on their own. But when Lawrence is, is teaching them how to, hey, the, yeah, kid, this is Lawrence. Uh, this was just that so as beautiful as the movie is and it's gorgeous and if you go and I do encourage you to go watch it watch it in IMAX get immersed feel the sand blowing through your face but it's like, I'm like I can't enjoy this bro like this is literally a story of Hamas that the IDF and you're gonna have all these Americans and Europeans watching it and cheering wow what a great movie yet they still don't give a fuck that these same characters that they're cheering for on a on a movie screen they don't give a fuck that they're being murdered in real life because Americans love a rebel in a movie. If it's Star Wars, ooh, they love the rebels. They hate the Empire, don't they? Ooh, they love, they love Lisan al Gaib, the <laughs> Shai Hulud. Oh, Mu'adib. They love him. They love Timothy Chalamet when he's hanging out with Arabs in the desert. At one point, Bihka on a jinn, Benicio del Toro is like, go out in the desert. He's like, but be careful. There is the jinn. Of the jinn. It is dangerous. <laughs> I'm like, the jinn? Look, Wahiyat Allah, the jinn? Like, 
بس انه so it's cool in a movie masterpiece يلا give it all the Oscars بس like all these Arabs being killed in Gaza لا it's fine Israel has the right to defend itself so with all of that having spent the last five months glued to my phone watching all these Arabs being butchered I'm sorry that I could not enjoy Dune Part 2 I enjoyed Dune Part 1 when I watched it didn't feel any of that despite the beautiful beautiful cinematography I think Greg Frazier shot it Anjed يعني مواه Denis Villeneuve's uh, uh, steady hand at direction, beautiful, everything. The character development about Shai Hulud, about Lisan al Gaib isn't great. Timothy Chalamet, I don't care about him. But it's like, I just had a hard time. And let's just look at a couple of photos, because this is funny, you know. At the premiere, this is the, uh, the, the global premiere of the movie. This is Anya Taylor Joy, bro, showing up. Oh, she's in the movie. I saw her. She's in the movie. Yeah, she's in the Very movie. briefly. Look at this. Anya, what are you doing? She cosplaying as Arabs? Yeah, look, look at the close-up. It looks even more bizarre. And then, if, and then if, when a woman is veiled, you know, do you have rights? Take off your veil. You have no women. You have no rights. Why do you do this? You know, for Hollywood, for a premiere, for a Shai Hulud, they don't care. Yalla. Honey Florence Piuk, I mean, I should follow Florence Shusheba. What is going on, bro? So just for a premiere, you know what I mean? The Lodopter looks... What is that dress, Basanja? The, the Dune fashion was, was insane. And we have a couple, just an interesting tweet. He just said everything I just said. He says, one, he says, for decades, the West has attacked Islam, spread propaganda, and now they are making money from a movie inspired by it. And when you see all these people who celebrate the fighters with my shoe, then someone asks him, how accurate is the movie? Is it related to real life events or just a made up storyline? Like, this guy's an idiot. Doesn't even know what sci fi is. Anyways, he says, no, it's made up, obviously. The author made a sci-fi novel in 1965, yeah, Frank Herbert, and took a lot of inspiration from Islam and Bedouin cultures. You would see him using terms such as jihad, Mahdi, Salat, uh, I can't read that, what is that? Uh, Ulema, uh, Al-Burhan, and many more. So literally he would use these words, and then someone kept tahad, including the term jinn, which is true. So the movie, and it very much is inspired by Arabian culture, uh, visuals, Shuma uh, Betkun, and again, it, and it, I'm kind of happy that the, the at least it's the story of like basically rebels and Hamas defeating the IDF. I'm just upset that it's not how people are going to interpret it. Americans, mm -hmm. it's not how they're they're not going to take those lessons from it. You know what I mean? I'll be like, oh, very nice. Now let's keep funding the genocide. Um, I would I would recommend you guys watch it. Watch part one. It's long, but it's nice. It's immersive. And again, you guys who go watch part two and don't matahal muhalkun from a very nice movie. And these movies like this don't come along very often. I wish I could, and it may, if I saw this six months ago, probably would have loved it. Maybe if I watch this again a couple of years from now when all of this isn't so fresh in my mind, I can maybe enjoy it for what it is. You know, it's not there. Like, that's the story of the book. They're adapting the story. They did a good job adapting the story. I feel like any movie set on like, like a desert scenery, something like that, I'm happy to watch it. Oh, you don't like? Like Mad Max? No. Exactly like Mad Max. You don't like Mad Max? Uh, I haven't seen it when it's in Charlotte the desert. <laughs> watch Fury Road. It's, don't, you can skip. You can watch the second one. Watch the second Mad Max. Just watch Fury Road for sure. <laughs> You're never going to watch it. <laughs> the, what are you, to, speaking of watching, I just talked for 15 minutes about a movie that I watched that you guys didn't watch. Mm. What are you guys currently watching? Share with us any movies, any TV shows on Netflix. Are you playing any video games? Let's, let's, let's open up. I want to hear. Video games, la, I recently saw... Killing Eve, it's uh, newly added. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think she likes it. You like Killing Eve. It's newly on Netflix. It's super, super good by one of my favorite writers. Um, uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge. Yes. Nice. I also love Fleabag. I've seen a few episodes. Of a friend recommended that I watch some Fleabag. I saw like three episodes. Very funny, but it's not so it's funny. The season two is better. Mm. Season two is better. I don't mm -hmm. think I'm going to continue. So no. <laughs> That's when it? Yeah, yeah, killing Eve. Oh, you finished the whole thing? Yeah, in like uh. a few days. <laughs> I oh, it's done. It. It's, it's not long. I saw the bear before that. It oh. was so bear, incredibly nice. Bear is great. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. It's like an anxiety attack, the TV show. Anna. It's so uncomfortable. It makes beautiful. me so uncomfortable to watch Anna it. And I love watching a lot of series and I love watching cooking shows. So it was... <laughs> yeah, but my, it my, was my, perfect. my anxiety attack it mixed in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was perfect. Um, me, um, I recently watched season two of Al-Rawabi School for Girls. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Have you? Never, but so it's, it's, it's on Netflix. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a teen season. show, I guess, but it's Jordanian, so it's pretty interesting when Netflix makes something Arab. It is. Um, 
It is there two... Lisan Al Gaib? Shai Hulu? They... No, it's not. It's but it's Arab. season two, actually, when I saw that it's a different cast with like a different yeah, it story, is. I just kind of stopped. Yeah, I mean, season one's better, but the season's more chill. Mm. I mean, it's still anxiety inducing, but it's more chill. And I'm also watching House, which is oh. old. I Vintage. Prefer, I prefer watching older shows. <laughs> Uh, it's from 2004, I think. Yeah, so that that's what I'm currently watching. And I'm Shakazi Balekun, folks. I don't watch a lot of TV anymore lately. I've been playing. I'm playing Harry Potter. I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy. Your brother was supposed yeah. to give me Hogwarts Legacy. Elio, the Tali Spider Man. I'll give you Hogwarts. Did yeah. you pirate I it? it? I took it from another patron. I took it from Elia Mujabir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> patrons are fighting over who's gonna give me video games. <laughs> so thank you to your brother for offering, but I got it from I got it from someone else. So I'm, I've been playing Harry Potter. It's not it's Hogwarts, running around Hogwarts doing magic. It's super fun. It's a lot of fun. I also downloaded Cyberpunk 2077. I'm gonna load that up once I'm done with Harry Potter Hogwarts. I'm gonna play that best. Watching folks, I don't know my guilty pleasure. Uh, Love is blind, baby. I've been watching. I've been hitting the Love is <laughs> really? Blind season six. Really? Oh so yeah, not, I, I, I love that shit, man. Those I. All those Netflix reality dating shows. Have you seen Too Hot to Handle? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, it's like classic. <laughs> I like Too Hot to Handle, but once I started to watch like Love Island, Too Hot to Handle isn't enough. It that doesn't do it for me anymore. You know what I mean? But Love is Blind, just seeing how desperate these people are to fall in love with a wall between them, and then the, the disappointment when they see each other, and then we're like when the love fades and they're living together and they start fighting i love it i love it it's so good you there's a sorry I well, like, you can't write drama that's better than these motherfuckers you know what i mean like there's a reality show i also saw on netflix a small love on the spectrum oh, oh yeah fuck. i don't want i felt guilty watching that honestly yeah it's but well, it feels weird but by then you get to really know the characters and you and that you fall in love with some of them and it's so interesting to watch and hey, it's bless one of my favorites like i i Keep waiting for new seasons. So you recommend Love on the Spectrum? It's really nice to watch. If, is that you like awkward, awkward cringe moments? Is it awkward because they're autistic? Eh, la, la, and wow, they no actually what? take you. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually take you and uh, along on their dates. Mm. Yeah, they must have out for like a long period of time. Up to and you feel awkward and and I'm talking. Should but come on. <laughs> but it's so fun to watch I'm, and Jed, you fall in love with them I saw a more fucked up show once called like The Undateables I can't remember if that was the name it was like people with extremely weird physical attributes and how they find love and that shit was disturbing one. but love weird. on the spectrum and it's not it's not fucked up but I guess they're trying to get autistic people to date and they're helping them they get them coaches it's That's so awesome, nice no? uh, it's very nice very nice I don't know they, uh, once they make love is blind autist, uh, autism <laughs> I'll watch that you know what I mean <laughs> I need there to be a wall between them. You know what I mean? Uh, Love is Blind got a lawsuit. Did you hear about that? Oh, really? No. One of, I don't know if it's like from a previous uh, person or the person from the newest season, but someone sued them for emotional damages because the person she got with apparently was very emotionally abusive or something like that. And then they edited out, edited out all of her scenes from the season. Like you, you, and I, 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 I work in reality TV. No one should ever sign up to a reality TV show. And I just like as a friendly, hey, then, because you're going to be used for content. No one there cares about you. You're there. How can we get the most out of you? So, so don't, I would never be a contestant on a reality TV show. And I mean, it's scary. You can't control what, what they choose they have hundreds of hours of footage but so they're going to choose 20 minutes of it and put it on hey so they're going to choose the juiciest you ain't going to look good you ain't going to no one's going to get out of there looking good so uh i love watching reality tv i would never want to be in one you know what i mean it's I dangerous never. india folks apparently is uh, horrible for women to go to i never really knew that but for some reason my twitter recently Every couple of days we thought it like a story of like someone groping someone in india for some reason this woman got harassed in india Maybe because I, I read the tweet. But they still, like, this guy loves to read about this, so here's more. Hello, uh, there's, there's been this crazy story of like this Brazilian couple that were traveling on a bike in India. They get attacked by like these seven men. They attack the husband or the man, and they gang R word. I'm gonna say it once. They gang rape the woman. From now on, I'm gonna call it grape. So they gang grape the lady. And then they go to the police and they file a report. And then all these stories start coming out on Twitter of like, yeah. Uh, I've been traveling to India for X many years and I've seen all of this and that. It's not safe for a woman to go there. So let's just check it out. That's Sadia. Here's just the first post. Uh, yeah, but I feel like I know all assessments I'm in. And I, I, just, I never used to see about this. You, know, you assume a lot of these, a lot of countries like that have issues, you know, maybe culturally and stuff. So it says here, this tweet says, a travel vlog couple trying to visit every country in the world decided to go 
to India as their latest destination. 11 hours ago, they announced that they were at the hospital because uh, the husband, the man, had been beaten up and she had been gang-graped by seven men. Uh, horrific. Let's watch the video of them in the hospital, obviously. <laughs> not, of the, not of the deed itself. Uh, so, it, so it's in Spanish. <laughs> Something has happened to us that we would not wish on anyone. Seven men have graped me. They have beaten us and robbed us, although not many things because what they wanted was to grape me. We are in the hospital with the police. It happened tonight here in India. Uh, horrible. Uh, then there was this tweet that kind of added more context, I guess. That's so unbelievably scary. It's so disturbing, man. She's very composed in the video. I'm definitely still in shock. This is from David Joseph Volodosko. He says, The level of sexual aggression I witnessed while living in India for several years was unlike anything else or anywhere else I've ever been. Once, a total stranger, a British woman, asked to sleep in my bed and pretend to be my girlfriend on a train ride because a man walking by in the hall had licked her foot and she felt unsafe. I introduced a female friend to a young Indian man and instead of shaking her hand, he groped her breast and when she became angry, he became extremely hostile and I thought I was going to have to fight the guy. I never met a female traveler who had not been groped or assaulted or worse, even if they had only been in the country for mere days. I love India. It is and it will always be one of my favorite places in the world. Why, bro? After everything you just said, I love it. One of my favorite countries. Sounds horrible. But I have advised female friends who asked me not to travel there alone. This is a real problem in Indian society that warrants more attention, and I hope it will improve in time. Uh, I feel like I've always read and heard about this kind of yeah, stuff in India. Me too. They've always been videos. Kind of new to me. And here's another like story of like, for example, here's another example of how extreme it can get. 13-year-old girl who was reportedly gang graped in India, graped again by the cop. So she what? went. To, so Not she went surprising. to the police. She went to the police to report the events. And then he did the same thing to her. Like, the levels, like, I don't know, Shit. she's a 13 year old girl who reported being a gang R worded by four men in India was then R worded again by a police officer whose help she sought. Police in northern state of Uttar Pradesh confirm Wednesday that they have arrested the unnamed officer and five other suspects, etc., etc. And there's just this one comment from this guy that I kind of agree with. He says, his wife was wrapped by seven men and the man hardly has bruises if seven men tried to do that to my girl i'm gonna need to be dead or unconscious it appears he got hit once or twice and decided to watch instead of fight she will leave him and rightfully so within a year as a man you should be willing to die to protect your girl without a second thought you know what i'm not into all this macho stuff because i kind of fucking agree bro bro die yeah and do whatever it takes except death rather than watch seven men do that to your woman Seven Indian men too. Indian people are kind of small physically for the most part. And let's be honest here. Don't come, don't come at me call me a racist now. So they're physically small in stature. A lot of them. They're not huge. Asians are kind of small. I'm going to stop this, this line of thought right now. But anyways, go fight back, bro. Holy shoot bruises. A couple of bruises on your head. So you never know what happened. Okay, they held him down. He, yeah, should be exactly. he should be willing to die. He, should be he did not do enough to break free from their grip. Their weak Indian man grip. How strong can it be? They're mostly malnourished. Let's be real. <laughs> sorry for our Indian Sorry to our Indian fans. Because the ones that, that did that are probably malnourished. Okay, they could probably... He probably was like, you know what? Khalas, I got it, man. Just, I'll watch. Fuck it. I hate this man. Honestly, it's his fucking fault. You should be angry at him. Uh, yeah, she's probably going to leave him. Definitely leave him. Plus, he's too old for you. He bro. looks old. He looks like... He looks like a grandpa, bro. He looks like Lebanese, kind of. He should have... <laughs> honestly, he should have died. He should not have come out of this alive. Like, you do not come out of this alive. And when the woman that's with you... Oh I my god, and her, like, how do you recover from something like that? Horrible. Horrific. She's never gonna recover. Horrific. Anyways, don't go to India, folks. That's what we're trying to say. Uh, uh, public service announcement. India bad. Want to talk about this Asseria? Because the episode is already too long. So let's move on this. Quick. Uh, I've just been noticing this trend. Ala TV Lebnene. MTV, New TV, Jadid, all this sort of thing. They're talking a lot about TikTok. Boomers, the shows that boomers watch on on actual television. And for example, what the side for the head got Rex or Dr. Food, for the head can fee panel on the Jadid like JB panel of experts. I'm Bihko, I swear to God. So, here for example, Shuf Al Jadid, there's a whole fucking panel, folks. Like, nah, nah, this is a YouTube show. Muffy budget, Yana, you know what I mean? We have a Patreon, we get a little bit of a couple hundred bucks a month, you know what I mean? Hey, we're having fun, we're dicking around. These TV shows, like, 
في بادجت في عالم في كروز في فريق ورا في فريق انتاج وفريق يعني واعداد وريسيرش تيم وهيدا هلا سم اوف ذيس شوز ذا ريسيرش ذي دو از واتشنج اور شو بس انه هلا بنقول بس انه لايك لوك ات ذس هي فبركه موجوده بين ثلاث اشخاص كاتراكسا وكاتراكسا موجوده حاليا بالامارات وانا عايش 15 سنه بالامارات بحق لها توصل بخمس دقائق بيعملوا لهم المنع سفر Well, I hope this doesn't get me uh, copyright. Hey, that song. Let's pause it for a second. Play it again. Anun Hounik. Katrak sama bedat tadai. Ma'na al mat biqdar yqul ma bedat tadai. Alla anu man el is. Katrak sama bedat kame na pausing. Anna hek btarfu. Ma tulati. Kena natrin. Nhna nimri the shoes bad. Ma nnarfa lak. Alla fi fi hay. Fi hay. Alla insan yadai. Exactly. No. Anna bilik lash. No. It's funny. Like Katrak sa wuslet. I'm just waiting for the shot of the panel. It's a fucking panel on like an actual <laughs> television show. What is this? How much does it cost to turn on the lights on this set? But the guy being boomers to talk about TikTok. But that's the thing. The theory that I have is that boomers watch more TikTok than young people at this point. They watch the shitty TikTok. They watch the live streams. They watch all the. Yeah, they watch exactly. all the worst stuff. And every time I get in a cab, so you know le. أنا ولا على التيك توك بشوف بشوف I'm like how much time do you spend on تيك توك برو all these old boomers they fucking love تيك توك برو isn't that do. fucking crazy they love تيك توك more than we do هون for example كمان على الجديد they had guests Joy Uran Tasidis oh, we know we've had our history with Joy Tasidis our second lawsuit threat was من الاستاذ Joy وخي Uran I think it's I think it's the water under the bridge at this point isn't it guys anyways <laughs> يعني, <laughs> they're both guests prefer, like on these Shows or Biamal interviews with Mashahir Bijibo, like a famous actor and his wife, or a famous actor and his brother, or a famous two famous actors who were best friends. Amelo Ado Heke do an interview with Mabadkun, where there's a host to be said, Rasila Mabarif Shu. They're doing the same thing, but with two TikTokers. Yani, joy you have you, like, illu la joy, and takif pithes what the. They're literally like, I'm back on. I don't know if you can watch this without getting copyright, but I know. فيه لا جوي خياك يلي ماشيين بالدرب سوا واعترف له بشيء مش قايل له يا قبل اعترف له شيء لخيك شو اللي بيجي له انا جوي اف نيفر تولد يو ذس بس انه اي لوك اب تو يو نو اتس لايك وعم بيبكي وجوي عم بيدمع اتس لايك اوكي اي جيت لايك بيبل دو ذس اون شوز بس انه ناو وي دوينغ ذس وذ تيك توكرز وعلى الجديد يعني مين عم بيحضروا يعني ستة عم تحضر هيدا الشيء الله يرحم ستة ماي جراند مذر جو ديد بس انه لايك عم تعم تحضر هيدا الشيء هوز واتشينغ ذس It's just so weird. Hisham Haddad, folks, look, Hisham Haddad. Hon ent ba'tilion, I think. Ma ba'rif, bro, he's talking to TikTokers. Ana mish sami'a fiyon bhayata an like drama. Ana mish sami'a fiyha bhayata. Hon el TikTokers taba al boomers that boomers watch and it's so concerning. Like ba'tilitin, Hisham Haddad ma Jana Almir u ma Leila Hamza. Nainat on TikTokers like little ano young adult. Hayd ma Leila Hamza. An shu ma bihki Hisham Haddad. Hisham Haddad yani is an actor. Ando 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 talk show. Ando shirkat marketing. U ana what are you doing, bro? Min a a a influencer Lebanonia. Lebanonia? Influencer. Min a a TikToker Lebanonia. Abir al Sagir. Shili li tabaq ajan ana. Min al ishal li ento btaamlu. It's like so and like we're not gonna watch those things and we're like what who. I mean, oh, a TikTok could be the main. You shouldn't be asking that question, President. I should be asking because I'm, I'm young and stupid. Uh, some kind of fucking weird ass rant. Look at this. And like, why are you talking about this? Who are these people? Look at his face. Like his brain is fried. Like us, but he doesn't like. I need to fry my brain for this show. Who? Why are you frying your brain for this? Yeah, I'm not like. I'm not going to. My body, bro. Why are you talking? Oh, yeah, I'm not like you. Hello, you're with us today. But you're not with Hamza. No, I'm not with you. He knows like stories. Mean we some? Who are these people? You're not sure that you're going to get the hijab for a month. No. And it's so it's so random. You know what I mean? He should invite you on his show. No, no, no. To talk about your losses. Would you go? Hello, we have friend, the friend of the show, Oh My Jad, who's who like works. Oh yeah, yeah. Who's like his right hand man. Like, we love Oh My Jad. For us, we're killing Oh My Jad. You're not famous enough. But I'm not. But I'm not. I've I've even once hinted at the No Jad. I'm like, does someone on your team like watch our show? Because sometimes we talk about really obscure TikTokers, and then they end up. على هشام حداد show like the following week they have a come in they have a social media guy بيجي وبسي بيحكي. Yeah. I got more proof this week that they 100% watch our show. Last week, Hakina, two weeks ago, on the bathroom reviewer Karen, right? She has, she had less than 3,000 TikTok followers. Hala, she's maybe at like 3,000. This is a, a a TikTok she dropped like a few days ago. 
100% proof in Hisham Haddad. Someone on their research team watches our show and they use us as, oh, I don't mind, do it. It's been years. <laughs> Hi guys, this video is a cry for help. So, as you all already know, maybe, sections on TikTok is going to be making fun of me tonight. <laughs> so, so I'm going to be getting... maybe maybe they came across her account. Totally fair. You know, some of her TikToks are blowing up. But you know, five days after we talk about her, this TikTok account that has sub 3000 followers. It's just, hey, maybe maybe someone on that research that pay us a little bit of kickback. You know what I mean? A couple hundred bucks a month for all these ideas. <laughs> You know, we're leaving him hanging with the Mamad Sawir. I should start thinking about him. Hey, the Shur Hayamil this week is the Nahna Mamad Sawir. Again, uh, we're just, it's all in good fun. Oh my God, for us, we're killing our Zab. If you're not going to die, I'm going to die. Okay. I think he has his own show now, Oh my God. Of course he, like he does. Own, an Jad, his name. I think. I think it's more An Jad. An Jad, An Jad. No, he's moving on up. Started okay. off as Hisham's assistant. One day, Oh my God, Anna Hasid, your assistant. I don't know how to play an instrument. <laughs> I'll pretend to play the instrument. So now like I can he be, does? I can be on. No, he can play. Hey, hey, whoa. Jad is a friend of the show. Don't get us in trouble. But <laughs> the same thing is happening. I know. It's like a new phenomenon. I know this whole online celebrities clashing ma like real celebrities what? like in the US film Met Gala they started inviting YouTubers oh, and, no it, yeah. and it became like a whole thing and no you shouldn't invite those people they're not actual celebrities but I know they actually are I know a lot of people follow them and know them it is a sign of how times are changing you know what I mean like our parents who used to be interested in singers who famous actors who TV shows they used to watch them I guess they're interested in Dr. Fadiha Dr. Food Adna and no which shows you how uh, viewing habits are changing. And yani, uh, older people are spending more time on social media. Maybe they're watching less movies, less TV shows. Well, they're enjoying this stuff just as much as we are. And I don't enjoy TikTok. I enjoy uh, the weirdness of it, if anything. But something like, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just interesting. It's weird. You know what I mean? Leave our TikTok. Leave TikTok to social media. Keep it off the mainstream television. But I mean, it's just sad. It just shows you how desperate these mainstream TV channels are to stay relevant. Yani. You know what I mean? Like they have to talk about like we're a YouTube show. Like it's kind of sad for them to copy us. And no, you know what I mean? Like they have a whole fucking crew and production team. They on TikTok. Like you don't need that. We got a couple of cheap cameras and that's it. Like you don't need to do all of that to talk about TikTok. I'm all stitch. Hey, I take TikTok directly. So we be bait like shoot fatty sharbel. Waji sir ma halehun. I'm on TikTok live. You can you can talk about directly, Hisham. Anyways. <laughs> Just, I just found this funny. I wish you can watch the joy to see this thing without getting copyrighted. But, uh, he makes me laugh. Mafina. Spare us. Bala, I wa- she's not. Uh, no. I, I, want, I want to go three months. Bala, bala, uh, hey, lawsuits. lawsuits. I need a break. Uh, quick, Abu Hadi. We got a comment that was like, I miss Abu Hadi. Where's Abu Hadi? Folks, you know. We, we all miss Abu Hadi. You know we all miss Abu Hadi. Except Elijah. But the Fergikun. Nezil fi spam Abu Hadi ana fakarat he was sending me his videos he wanted to be my friend wana katabt lo bhabak Abu Hadi ma ba'rif shu he never <laughs> answered me u shufu he just sends me videos i don't even respond i'm be batle he spams me shufu batle video hatat lo alab me batle me batle he's kind of just sending me videos at this point you're suggesting and the content oh so no he doesn't talk to me but so i love him Abu Hadi for urasna yeah we have a couple of videos Let's a palate cleanser from all the stuff. Hitler, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love this man. What are your thoughts on Abu Hadi Karim? Do, do you like, are you familiar with him from our show or? Um, like he's, I don't know him. Personal. I don't know him either. No, 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 no. Like, um, I didn't, I don't know. How old do you think he is? <laughs> Do you think is it he, ha- he has the face of an old man. 
let's watch this. Maybe this can help you a little bit. This is unironic. Yeah, I could tell. I cannot. Is he like, okay, hold on. He's old. Is he an old man who looks young or a young man who looks old? He's like, he has a Benjamin Button situation going on. You see? That's what I said. <laughs> okay, he's 43. 40. He's 43. Is he a father? Is that I, I don't know. His name is Abu Hadi. I don't think he's... I've never no, seen no. his kid. No, no. Abu Hadi. Eh, Abu. Ah, Abu. Yeah. 43. That's crazy. And he works at a foot at Patr Royal. He's a is he short? master. I don't know. He's uh, as tall as he looks. Oh, he's a master. He's a master. Exactly. I'm going to <laughs> and the khiyar, you know the whole khiyar, like sub-genre, sub-meme, right? Like it started with yeah, kusa, yeah, know, yeah. then people started to do different vegetables. Can fi basar, can fi jazar, but khiyar is the only one that actually, I think, caught on other than kusa. No, but I think he didn't get the joke. He's using a take Wrong. Now it became serious, so it was a joke, I think. ما بعتقد يأثر سلام هون هون شوف he's in pain while talking عم بنشر فيديوهات مثل العادة محتوية تجي تعليقات سخيفة خلصنا بقى وهالقد تفاها انتو شو لكم قصة وانا حق فيها وان شاء الله بنشر عليها انا شو ما بدي حتى لكم تعملوا لايك تتفاعلوا مع الفيديو من عيوني ما حب لكم انتو حرية ما تفوتوا على صفحتي شي بيخصني انا هيدا هيك هيك تفاعل ما في على الصفحة ولا اكسبلور ولا ترند ولا شي بقى طلعت الصفحة بعد عم تحسبوني لاني عم بنشر فيديوهات مين عم بيحاسبه برو؟ ما عم بفهم Maybe he's getting hate comments Who's لا انه no everyone loves him for the most part يعني بيعت المحتوى تبعه يعني useful بيعت reviews للاكل عرفنا على الاليجانس ستار انا صراحة يعني بالي ما كنت بحياتي ضدت الاليجانس ستار ونور كمان ما كان ينجرب الاليجانس ستار ضروري تفاهة وما تفاهة دارك ولا قدكش تشوفني خيي ما ترقبني Who's he talking to? Us شو تعطي الجلسة you? Like he's not looking at the camera. What's this different angle? Eh? It's like he's at a talk no, show. And it, it was like an artistic vision. And the OP, أكيد خلاص. She was just gonna <laughs> ring light. مثل أنا في الكاميرا تبعي لايف. This is the good stuff. He he graduated. Hey there, yeah, one final Abu Hadi, one for the road, folks. Ah, yalla qaldu aktar min min him to yirajja li al baqi. Lak al khiyar. I love that. I wanted that cut. <laughs> the angle. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy, bro. What a guy. And Zeddy looks 13. That's crazy. 13? Like, he's... He looks young. Anna, Anna. He's between 13 and 50. Nah, it's so yeah. weird. It's so it's hard to put your finger on it. But someone in the comments told us he's 43. So that's enough. Two comments told me he's in his 40s. I believe it. I believe it as well. Do we have time for something else? Shada didn't launch a podcast. He's filming podcast style clips. Let's just watch. He has the same mic. You got, you have, uh, Noor. Do you feel pride, proud? I know it's his mic stand sure. and a SpongeBob sticker that's, on it. So That's hilarious. By the way, he's wearing a shirt, the Metal Joy. Hey, that's Carl Lagerfeld or whatever the fuck. Ayuha al haq, lam tatruk li sadiqan. Shada, what are you doing? We are living in the days. People love the mirrors. بيحبوا المجاملات بيحبوا انك تمدحهم حتى اذا كانوا عم بيغلطوا كلمه الحق رح تخسرك كثير عالم يا ما ناس مرقوا بحياتي جربوا يستغلوني جربوا يلعبوا على مشاعري ويستعطفوني جربوا يحسسوني اني بحاجه الهم بالوقت اللي هن كانوا فعليا بحاجه الي تعلمت اني ما اتعلق واني اعزل الطاقه السلبيه عن حياتي واستبدلها بطاقة إيجابية من خلال ناس إيجابيين بيريدوا لي الخير يمكن هن قليل بس موجودين وأهم شيء اكتشفته أنه ورا كل رجال ناجح مرة الرجال قد ما يحب رفيقه ما رح يتمنى أنه رفيقه يصير أحسن منه يمكن يتمنى أنه يكون ناجح بس مش أنجح منه 
every friend of Shada's now you know ما بده اياك تنجح ضلك تحته لا شادا شادا بده يكون اعلى منك remember and i want all so my so friends nature. to do better than me bro i want my friends to do great and to take me with them is a she you know what i mean do great and pull me up with you you know what i mean help let me join in on your success انت you're like لا ضلك كون يا كلب Fuck, what the fuck, Shada? Well, horrible. Ma bedak Ryan, yani, to do well? You're saying this about your best friend, Ryan? Smat Ryan? Ma bedak Shada? Shada ma bedak yek tat adna bilhayat. Ma bedak yek tkoon tahtu la Shada. Remember that. He doesn't like you. Khalis, khalas na video. Anyways, yalla, be kafi, be kafi. Well, folks, uh, Karin, uh, we were done. Your inaugural episode. Good to episode. have you. Ahala, uh, sahala. And if you'd want to come back sometime, uh, Nadim is off for a couple more weeks. Yimkin, so if you would like to join us a couple more times, once, maybe never. Hello, we'll see what the comments say. Yeah, we'll I'm try, trying to keep everyone guessing. Labas, you were you were a great fit. You did great. We'd love to have you back. Yeah, hello, sahla. Hello, she did do great. Yay. Uh, Thanks. I'm for your first Thank time. You. You're a natural, Yanni. And we'd like to thank uh, you guys, the viewers, including Aline, our brand new blonde patron, JR, our brand new abductee patron, and our anonymous superhero patron. Uh, also, folks, uh, let me thank some other lovely patrons that we have and love blonde patrons like Joe Khuri, Enzo S, Ziad Mgharbil, Darkwing Duck, Leonardo Sawaya and Mirna Zakaria. Superhero patrons like Dr. William Watfa, the boobs doctor, Joey To, uh, Melting Around, and uh, Tar Shalhoub, and the Zataria family. We love you. And our God tier patrons. I forgot to thank our God tier patrons at the beginning. Oh my God. Rifat Fakih, Burgery, Eliel Mujabir, Jessica Ann, Raj, and Jack Sleeman. <laughs> uh, we cannot do this without you guys. We cannot do the show without our patrons. The show only exists because of our patrons. I can pay the interns. No interns, no show. You know the deal. So thank you guys so much. If you want to support this channel, an independent little YouTube channel, folks, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes all the difference in the world. Uh, for reals, we cannot do this without you. There are exclusive videos on there. So go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, any final thoughts, ladies? Anything you want to add? Something we didn't say? Fishy? Anna, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna interrupt them. Uh, the Arab sent me their episode early for me to watch, baby. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit that as soon as this is done. I gotta watch. There's a big drama going on with Ethan and everything. If they trust me enough to watch the episode early, it is an honor. Arabs, I love you guys. Frogan, we love you. Oh, uh, you got all our support. Capri, Raf, we love you. By the way, Raf, I forgot to mention Raf is Jewish, Anna. Frogan's co-host is Jewish, and Ethan is calling her anti-Semitic. I should have, we should have mentioned that. Anyways, what were you saying? I interrupted. We done? We're done. <laughs> I, um, I just hope you guys don't think I'm. Uh, never mind. Oh, what? You, <laughs> don't ask him to think anything. <laughs> She's great, folks. Be nice in the comments. We get a guest here to, to be fucking dick in the comments. I'm gonna fucking remove the comments. I'm gonna remove you from the channel. And just be sure comments and I love the podcast and no hate, but but I love the hate. And then a fucking energy. A paragraph of hate. It's all love, folks. Yeah, this episode is way too long. We love you all. And as always, do not worry.